Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you'll get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Are we on? All right, we're done with the show, but we're doing the open of the show now. Okay. What was on the show today? What's coming up on the show today is that what you're saying. is the better way to say it. You are correct about that. Yeah, so let me throw that right back at you, Jake. Uh, well, Dan, you went to a couple's dinner and had some hilarious anecdotes from that. I moved out of my house. Uh, we went to the roof of our potential studio and watched the eclipse. That's right. These are eclipsed glasses. That is true. So talked that's why some I'm these. Did what we do every Monday. Talked women's college basketball and trans issues. Those are both staples of this program. What would we do without those guys asking those questions? Like we would have no content. I s- every Monday, you know? Yeah. And we had the news. You read a bunch of people's birthdays. He told us he was dead. I mean, that's pretty much it. Wow, that doesn't sound that good. I'm not going to stay tuned. That's for the fan to decide. All right. All right, 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 all they eschewed any attempt at comedy today. They know this one's serious. Yeah. Um, they simply instructed people not to just park on the freeway and get out and watch it. Which I wouldn't think that adults have to be told, but <laughs> apparently they do. Well, I could see the excitement. I could see the allure. I will tell you this, uh, and I think I found out about this initially from you via... The lady who cuts our hair. But uh, the great Victoria. Main Street Grapevine, very busy for like 9.30 in the morning on a Monday already. It was a buzz. All those little bars and wine places down there are having $300 parties. And it was, it was a lot of people down there. We're in our temporary, possibly, what do we call it? I think you nailed it. Permanent permanent studio. Perhaps permanent. We're in a studio today. And we are. we're on YouTube, so if you're just listening on the uh, the audio platforms, you can head over to YouTube, see what Jake's wearing. This is... Uh, Looks like some kind of soccer... Iceland. Kit. Yeah, I guess I never understood if kit counted if it was only the top. Um, but I have like this really stupid oh, bit. Kit is like the whole uniform? I think, but I don't know. Kit's a fit. Kit's a fit. I have this really stupid bit of buying the jersey of every country we visit. Okay. I used to do the jersey of... Like a jersey for baseball teams, and not that your bit? Whenever, yeah, whenever we went to, if we went to the Rockets game, I'd get a, a Rockets t-shirt thing, yeah. And then I became plain t-shirt guy, except for today... And I think we're going to bring back wacky t-shirts on videos. And maybe, I was thinking about this video, man. And Jake and everybody. Okay. Maybe, I'm not too proud. I mean, I will be sold. I wanted to wear this today for our buddy who paid to be in the den Mm -hmm. with Trip U. He organizes school trips or some such. And so I wanted to wear it to uh, give him a little promotion, but I feel like this spot could be for sale. Oh, this there's nothing that's not. I want to be very this? clear about. Of course, this hat. 
That could have your company on it <laughs> for an entire three-hour video. Temporary face tattoo? Oh, okay. Temporary, huh? Let's go. Temporary? Well, yeah, because... Are you willing to go all the way? Well, the only reason that I wouldn't be willing to go all the way is because if they only buy like a month and then somebody else wants that space a month later, I need to have that available. It's a little warm, though. So. <laughs> okay, well, you got the plug in. What's it going to promote next? Uh, the eclipse. The sun and the moon. Yeah. With his eclipse shirt. But you got bits today. That's what I mean. If yeah. we're going to add video to our game... He's got his Ben DiNucci like, hat. I feel like bit t-shirts are going to come back. Sure. But I do like the hat. All right. So on today's program... Do you know who is playing in the men's national championship tonight? Purdue. Mm-hmm. Typically two teams involved in this sort of athletic contest. I'm only worrying about the one that's going to win. <laughs> Who are they playing? UConn. UConn. All right. Should have known that, right? They're always good. It's always a good guess. We got Foul Ming. <laughs> okay. On Purdue. Zach Eady. Yeah. Do you like this headline on ESPN.com? UConn Purdue title game has all the feels. History, one seeds, and big men. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. It's tonight. <laughs> it is tonight. Okay. It I should tonight. know that. Yeah. Uh, if we survive I'm, the eclipse. If we survive the eclipse. I was thinking this yesterday when I was uh, taking the dogs out, and it was very hot. I did a little yard work yesterday. Very hot outside. It was. As you probably know, because you were even doing more than me. But why wouldn't Dallas have... Why didn't they move the eclipse to yesterday? Because it was very sunny all day long. It would have been perfect. You got the day off anyway. Sure. And now they move it to a Monday, or they kept it scheduled for Monday. So I don't think that was a good move. I mean, they moved Luka Doncic's uh, day to July 6th. Right. Or is it the 8th? It might yeah. be the 8th. It's just not the day that a bunch of police officers were killed. Yeah. Um, so why be excited about, first of all, Blake is not here with us. I'm Dan, Dan McDowell. Yeah, I'm Jake. I, I think that's, <laughs> yeah, there's Blake. Probably pretty well. There's Blake. Yeah. Blake is not on here. YouTube. He has left town. He is skiing in Colorado during the eclipse, during the path of totality. I've I been very it. upset about this. I have been talking about the eclipse for like a year now. He's known when the eclipse is. He chose to take a vacation out of VFW, DFW, the very time there is an eclipse. I just want to um, reiterate a couple of eclipse stats for you. <laughs> okay. So this is 2024, so they say. The last time the city of Dallas was in the path of totality, a full eclipse Something you've only seen on, you know, you've only read about or maybe seen pictures of. 1878 was the last time. The next time. Like, if you, you have the opportunity now to see it here in Dallas. Yep. The next time there will be an eclipse in Dallas. The year 2317. Are you... Capturing how rare this is yet. Are you are you feeling what a day this is? No, I mean, yeah, I woke up and knew something was different. It wasn't just UConn Purdue. Wasn't just that you were in a different house? No, it wasn't just that either. No, I mean, I'm glad that people are excited about it. I like for people to be happy. I just don't care at all. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe that. At all. Uh now I will tell you I will just go ahead. Well, just it probably seems somewhat hypocritical. As we reference the Iceland jersey, I have mentioned many times that I thought it was pretty amazing that it was broad daylight at 2 a.m. and that it never got dark the entire time uh, Entire time I was there. But that was like for five days. Does that mean you don't sleep because of the circadian rhythm? Um, there, Is it difficult? It can be. And most of the houses there, like the Airbnb we stayed at, both of them had like heavy, heavy blackout lining and curtains. Okay. There was no light getting into the house. But then, of course, you know, for part of the year, their kids are 
go into recess and it's completely dark outside. Yeah. Looking at the, the Big Dipper. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Orion. Yeah. The Big Dipper is really the only one I could ever figure out. Or some major. Okay. Um, but I just want to promote that we do have some sports on today's program. Actually, looks like more than I thought. The Mavs, I think we're all geeked about that as we emanate live from uh, the DFW area. And if you are somewhat new to our show, we do cover the Cowboys and Luca <laughs> very heavily. Definitely you can count on that. The Cowboys, Luca, the NFL, and then everything else, uh, including, and if you know anything about us and you've listened to us over the years, you're not just tuning in, then you know we're going to break down women's basketball for you. Sure. That'll be coming up today. And if you uh, know us for five minutes, you also know that we're stoked on this other sport that has a big weekend coming up. A tradition unlike any other. That's right. Did you see that uh, the word is that Tiger <laughs> shot a 31 on his uh, on the first round in the practice round today? On the first uh, nine. Again, I'm very excited for you. Yeah. How great would that be if Tiger did it again? What are the odds on that? Ooh. What can we... What can we wet the beak on that? Because I feel like... Plus 15,000. For real? Yeah. I'm in. I'm doing it. Y you know, I... I like good value, and I got, got in on good value with Luca. Yeah, and I think last time you bet on him, he... um. He couldn't walk by the end of his Thursday run. Tiger, that's to, true, yeah. It took a WD. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but that was a lot closer to the accident. It's been years. He's he's had rehab. He's probably Yeah, had no, new... he hasn't had any, like, massive major uh, medical scares mid-tournament in the last month or two. You think he went to Germany and got, like, new blood and stuff like Kobe did? That was so awesome when that became, like, a common thing to hear about. Like, dude, you hear what Kobe's doing? What happened to that? They probably have some version of it now i mean if here. kobe did it wouldn't a lot of people be doing it that they were gonna like spin his blood or something yeah get back in yeah. yeah that landed really hard with like 18 19 year old me like this guy's insane did you think that could help you uh, i'd probably given up by that point but there was a time where i thought kobe would be considered better than michael jordan i think that's how every kid grows up is just you just want there to be a guy who you can tell all your dad and his friends to f off about yeah. I'm probably doing that with Luca a little bit. Boy, I yeah. definitely did it with LeBron. Like, you know, graduated high school the same year as me, and I remember. You just wanted Bob to be mad? Yeah, oh yeah. I wanted everybody older to be mad. And I'm like, this is going to do it. This is the guy. Now, do you think that will eliminate you being able to be sucked in by Blake and no others in generations to follow? No, I don't. I think. Because you know that time it's is a, a game. Flat, time is a flat circle. I have a very quick weekend update. Mine is easy. Because you know, well, you saw me for a bit of the weekend, but that'll spill over into your talk. Sure. Um, you do know I left the show Friday a little bit down because, uh, not because we did a uh, program in Streetman, Texas, which <laughs> is over the 100-mile radius from the Grapevine 9-11 Memorial. But we still did it because they were very good people, and it was a good time. But it was a long drive back, like 2.15, maybe two and a half hours. Yeah. And uh, rush hour and all that kind of stuff, we hit it directly. And then I didn't get to go home because I had to go straight to a restaurant in Grapevine. Oh, no. And it's not just that I'm annoyed by couples dinner. I'm just annoyed by couples dinner when it's this group of friends of my wife that I don't associate with at all, ever. She has this little neighborhood group of ladies, and they do stuff and things, and I don't really even know what. I don't... She starts to tell me, but I don't care. All I know is you're going to be out for a few hours, uh -huh. and that's great. And I am not like... Like, when I get home, she would be like, oh, where'd you go? What'd you... Who was there? Well, I like, a thousand questions. I don't ask her. I don't care. No post game show. I don't care. She'll tell me about book club, and then that's the only reason I know there's one man, a guy, a, a man in their book club. <clears throat> but I, you better believe it. If I was in some kind of a book club and there's one lady, 
Oh, she would yeah. want to know all about that lady. For sure. I don't care about this guy. In fact, I hope uh, he's, you know. He's tagging all of them. Yeah, sure. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> like, keep her for a little while extra. Um. So it's, but it's, she wanted, like, for some reason, one of her little friends is like, hey, I want to, let's do, let's invite the guys this time. And the guys don't really know each other. And what happened was very predictable. First of all, overall, it was fine. I, I got through it. I'm here. But after a lot, of, and one of the reasons it was fine is we recently went to France. Mm. So we have a lot to talk about. Most though, those people had been overseas, or you know, like now we could just compare notes and stories. And and how they, much of the workload would you say was split to your half or your side of things between you and the wife? No, I was I I okay. carried a lot. I'm a uh, I'm a professional talker. Sure, Jake. So I'm I'll spin the yarn on you. So that took up a nice portion of uh, the pre-dinner and then uh, some of during dinner. But then, inevitably, and I knew this would happen, they start all talking in their own little language. This, And they've got their little, like if you, me, Video Man, and Blake were somewhere together and with a bunch of people that weren't usually with us, we would kind of revert into, hey, let's start talking about, uh, hey, should we uh, yes, at least one sell advertising like, on my shirt? Should we, like, we just One person start... would definitely be like, you know, we don't say that word anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so. We'd be like, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding around. I'm just joking. He's like, yeah. It, that still. doesn't really fly anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of start into their own talk about things that they're really interested in and now it's me and these other guys that don't have any common threads except that we're with these ladies and we all got invited and so that was pretty uh that was the most awkward part and you're beat it was about 45 minutes of real awkward of they are not paying attention to us they're having the time of their life and we're dudes so we don't really care what they're like if it was us three talking and our wives were jumping in, they'd be like, well, what do you, what's that? What's that? Explain everything that you're saying. We're not like, hey, I really want the backstory on whatever you're saying here. Just want it to end. We just, yeah, we just all want it to end. So, you know, now it comes time. So uh, it, it was actually three couples. So it wasn't a, a, a ton of people. But which makes, you know, when you're an awkward small talk, that's with worse. a couple dudes who you don't have anything in common. You know, one was like a doctor. Mm-hmm. What do I have in common with this guy? Dude, I don't know if you remember <laughs> this, like with your daughters, but given that we have been successful enough to live in a moderately affluent area, when I go to the school, I am. It's it's sad. It is so. It's doctors. It's surgeons. It's lawyers. It's men of finance and titans of industry, and then me. Yeah. And it it's, used to be kind of cool if you worked for a radio station that everybody's heard of. Yeah. But now they're like, well, what do you call it? You're like, oh, dumb zone. Yeah. Like, well, what? It's, dumb zone, it's, on, it's online. And then you're like, well, actually, we have a production company. It's called, oh, man, that sounds <laughs> stupid, too. Yeah, it's called Dragon Den Production. <laughs> we got a new one. <laughs> we do have a new company. But I don't know that it's any better when you try to explain it to somebody. Do we want to announce that here, or are we going to wait till 420? We can wait. We have a big 420 event coming up, and we can't really totally plug it yet. We're like, it's like a save the date. Like, save 420 at 420. We're going to be doing a live stream. I will tell you, it'll be at an Alamo Draft House near you, uh, but I just want to wait till the tickets get on sale till we really start, But but, you know, just get ready for that. So now we get to the end, and the check arrives. So I see birthday girl is pulling out her wallet. And I thought, I don't know, maybe I had had a couple drinks. Um, but I said to other couple, hey, how about we'll just split it. We'll just split it down the middle. And they were like, oh, that's a great idea because it's so-and-so's birthday, blah, 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 blah. Now, my wife is hitting me under the leg, like, on the leg, like, what are you doing? Why are we splitting this a pretty big bill? And she was, had the, I didn't, 
I had one drink. Mm-hmm. I don't want to brag, but I don't drink very often. But at the other all. couples might have had more than one. They were all pounding a ton of drinks, and especially the couple I was splitting with. Yeah. And so now we're spending way more than the doctor. I've been there. Um, and then birthday girl did say uh, to her husband too, "Hey, well we're going to get the tip. We're going to get the tip. Okay." Now we have it all settled. They'll get the tip because they didn't plan on this. We're going to get our, you know, instead of just the check for the little stuff we ate. Anyway. Doctor probably had a Wagyu steak or something. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You're over there eating kale. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I didn't eat a lot. You know, I'm trying to watch the figure. So trying to really get in shape for this 420 event. Yeah. So, um... We get the check, two separate checks, and I can't remember the last time I did this, if ever, filling out the check and then just hitting the line or zero for tip. And then I fill in the number and I sign it. And now, you know, they're going to give a tip. They're going to give a cash tip. Husband of a birthday girl. But someone... I think I tip very well for a couple reasons. One, I think it's like good for the universe, my universe. Although uh, lately, maybe it's not really paying off, but I feel like overall (laughs) in life, I feel like treat people good, it'll come back to you, all that kind of stuff. I don't really believe in it, but why not do it? Yeah, I do it just to... It kind of makes someone's day a little better. You give a cup... I'll give one extra dollar on a tip. My wife will be like, what are you doing? That's 22%. And I'm like... Look, that one dollar, they're going to be like, "Oh, that's cool. It's over to you know, whatever." <clears throat> right. So now, somewhere, somebody is going through the receipts, like, "Oh, Dan McDonald. Oh, I know him. Oh, wow. Oh my God, zero tip. That's really what I'm worried about." Yeah. Because the late, you know, the the server or whatever will know she got her tip. It was all there together. But right. someone is out there in the universe saying, "Look at this guy." who doesn't tip, and they'll tell a story to their friends. It could have been even more awkward if uh, the other guy just did a little bit. Oh, yeah. Like, like let me just like, right, you know, I mean, I know they're doing cash. I'll do a little 10 And he time. may have. He's he, a doctor. He may have. Yeah. So How'd that's that my go? whole, uh, anyway, the, that, that's my story. Um, I tried taking a couple notes. Oh, one I took for you. My buddy who had friends in town the weekend before, and he said that's the only reason they ever go to the stockyards, went to the stockyards, and it made me think of your mom when he told me that they went to the John Wayne Museum. Is your mom stoked on that? Yeah. Are you very aware of the John Wayne Museum? Um, I guess I don't know. Okay. He's but like, oh, it's really cool. Would. And I'm like, really? Okay. I don't think I'd think that. Oh, Yo, she, I mean, yeah, it was, it felt like it was the only movies we had in the house for many, many years. We had a, uh. Like a cardboard cutout of him, like in our f- family room. Boy. Life size. Wow, that's... Yeah. And we also Let had... your mind uh, run, run wild on why that's there. <laughs> we also had... Um, my mom it's, kind of ran her business out of the house, and she, was wor- she worked in, or still does, sort of like upholstery, you know? Mm-hmm. So we had like staple guns that were, you know, compressed air-powered. And my brother would take my brother and I would take the John Wayne cutout into where those were and just light it up with staples. They they would shoot at a very high power, and we would just pelt it and then put it back in there, and he'd be all effed up. And she was not happy about that. No, but it was hilarious. You'd shoot him in the dick mm. with, the, with the staple gun. That doesn't sound very mature of you. No, I mean it's not like I did this last week. It's probably. 10 or 11, I don't know. Yeah, you would never do something like that. No, no definitely not. Um, yeah, but people from out of town, they do love the stockyards, man. I well, I think I, people in town love taking people to the stockyards. Yeah, yeah that's probably a good point. But I, I remember I had, a, uh, I had a professor in grad school, and he used to work for <laughs> this is a hot role now, I would imagine. He was like the tourist minister, uh, minister of tourist head for Israel. And he was teaching a class on like public relations for countries. Like, so how you're like, hey, we're going to blow your country up, but can you kind of be cool afterward? Like, 
you know, PR for uh, international diplomacy. And he was obsessed with the stockyards. Like he couldn't believe that it still existed. He's like, how did they keep this like this? You know, he's like, there's a real city around it. He's like, I've been everywhere in the world and this, these sort of things don't exist. You teach him about tourism? No, I mean, he I, th- I thought us, he was the but, tourism guy. But he was very, very impressed with it. He's like, you know, most cities just all kind of look the same now. But they kept this together and actually have livestock that they parade through the streets, you know, in the middle of the day. It's pretty cool. I guess. <laughs> I don't <laughs> You don't seem that stoked on it. No, no, I I like it too. You're right. Take people there. What it's that or uh, yeah, that's the place he was shot. Yeah, no, that one a little different. And you just kind of yep. All right, we're you done looking at it over now. there. You want to go? Yeah, go to uh, Hooters or <laughs> Spaghetti Warehouse. Yeah, those are the two things. Um, yeah, we did have a big weekend. We had to move out of the house, and I was already we were already yeah. It was a long drive. The people were great, but I had to pretty much. All day, Saturday and Sunday, it was just moving. Um, Because we're remodeling our house a little bit. And, uh, you know, we got two little kids, so they got a bunch of crap. And Dan came over to help a little bit. Chappie was there. Chappie was there yesterday as well. Uh, The house is not too far away. It's maybe 10 minutes away, just a rent house. Exorbitantly priced. Such a grift, which I think we determined is because of, like, what happened with Wired Will. Because most people who go to a house in the suburbs for three months, um, you either have the money to remodel your house or an insurance company is paying for it. Mm. So they set the rates like at crazy, crazy high because like Will was telling us, the money that his, I think we can say this, the money that his insurance company was giving him was more than he even needed for for rent and stuff. Because the insurance company is like, all right, well, it's what we do. Yeah, but what, is, what does a house person, in your neighborhood cost? Yeah, I, I don't even know, dude. No, I mean that's what they say. Yeah, they're like a, you live there. You yeah, have to make it equal. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but we're we're paying for it ourselves. You know, it's kind of rolled into the refinance, I guess, a little bit. But um, the house is fine. It's much smaller. Um, but oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I assumed it would have been the same size. And it she did say, your wife said it was the cheapest one she could find in this area. Yeah, and it, that was still quite, quite pricey. Um, but yeah, you got to get basically everything out of the house. So you got to pack everything up. And we had kind of been chipping away at it for the week before, but it's like my least favorite thing in the world to do. Okay, well. I can, I can confidently tell you that last night, at the end of the night, I was so dead and just like, I don't ever want to do this again. This is where you had, you... I can offer very little advice that is of use, but you absolutely, anytime you're moving, pay packers. Yeah, you mentioned that the other day. Because people are like, they just think that means movers. Oh, yeah, we're paying movers. No, 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 packers. Yeah. To come in, box up everything, label it. This is everything here from the kitchen, and they, you know, they're going to break a few things. (laughs) Yeah, but you might as well, you might... Do the same. Yeah, you're probably going to break a few things, too. They're pros. And yeah, and you guys kind of had big, giant boxes, which if you fill one of those with dishes, I don't know, it just seems like they would have smaller boxes for certain things. And Yeah. Because the packing is the worst part of moving. I would, I will help move. That, that ain't that bad. Just moving boxes from here to there. Yeah. But the tedium of packing and, un, yeah. you know, as I, you... Saw the only thing I really did is unscrew the <laughs> fifty screws that are in the baby crib. Yeah, to, Dan uh, took a look at apart. this thing. It was like, uh, I can have this done in five minutes. And I went back in there probably forty minutes later, and he was still screwing. It took like with an it. hour. <laughs> it is a beating though, but it's a beating. But then packers even, would do that. Even with the packers, do they? They don't unpack for you, do they? Well, now that's big money. If you're Larry David. Okay. You have everything delivered and then unpack. No, but unpacking is not bad because now you can go through everything. I'll throw this away. I'll get rid of some of this. I'll keep this. And you put it where you want. Unpacking, you have to do anyway. Yeah. So, yes, uh, just packers. Well, whenever we For move the future, back out yeah, of when you here move back, you into, must the, hire into the home, that's, that's something I will absolutely Because it seems like you guys didn't start until Saturday morning. 
We had started some stuff, but yeah, the bulk of it, you know, it's kind of hard. We're both kind of working and got to take care of the kids, so. You should definitely not be here today. Yeah, I'm whipped. Because I was and, whipped because I kind of helped you for three hours <laughs> on one day. And then the other thing about it, too, is, um, yeah, I mean, you're right. I'd rather do the unpacking than the packing. But we basically, what we, what we achieved yesterday was we got all the stuff into the new place. Most of it. 95% of it. There are a few things that she's got to go pick up today. We don't have to take all of our clothes because the bathroom in our bedroom is staying intact. It's like, I'm not going to pack up, like, all my winter clothes, you know? Okay. So that helped a little bit. But now it looks like a bomb went off in the house that we're in. You can still go back in there, right? Yeah, but at some point it's going to be difficult. Because, I mean, there's going to be some pretty heavy-duty work going on in there. But now, like, I got up this morning, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> you can write whatever on the boxes all you want, but it just... all You know how it is this with the kids' stuff. It's just crap everywhere. And I don't like... I'm not... I can't operate like that. Like, I'll probably stay up super late tonight messing with it and then just be equally tired tomorrow because I can't... I need things in the right place. Mm -hmm. It's very important to me. And it just, I was walking around the house this morning and was like, I feel like I'm going to get, I'm about to have a panic attack and break out in hives because this is so messy. Yeah. And I hate it. It'll probably take you as many months as you're going to be there just to finally get everything unpacked. Well, not if I can help it, but right. yeah. Because, you know, you pack up all the dishes and silverware and stuff. How many do you actually use? I know. Do you use one-tenth of all the dishes that you own? Yeah. Like, that, don't you use the same two cups every day? We definitely had a, a, a cup final solution over the weekend. Oh, my. <laughs> we thinned out the herd Fuzzies. Quite, quite a bit, yeah. Fuzzies took the hit? Yeah. Your split-lip barbecue cup? Yeah. That had to... That's gone. You know what's really funny, though, is we got there yesterday... And uh, I had seen pictures of the house, but I hadn't been there yet. She had been there a couple days prior. Um, and it's in an old neighborhood. It's in South Lake, but it's a really old neighborhood. And it's a small-ish house. It's not like a two-story or anything crazy. And the backyard's not very big. Talking a ranch? <laughs> it's a ranch style, Dan. Talking a ranch. There's a putting green in the backyard. Wow. Not fake grass? Um, no, it's, it's be fake. yeah, yeah, it's fake, okay. but like it's decent size. Okay. It's got a couple like little pin placements Perfect in it. for master's week. I know. I was kind of hoping you would have been there for the second day Perfect just for to you. see it. Yeah. yeah. Like, now what I'm going to walk over. What if I just, I can walk there. It's like a mile away, 20 minute walk. Yeah. And it's a nice walk too. It's a nice cool area back there. But what if in like three months I just have like a dynamite short game? <laughs> You're like, we don't have a pool. That's how you make your you money. Know? Yeah, her dough. Yeah, I putt. That's what I do. <laughs> so, anyways, it was a complete thrashing of a of a weekend. However, I did do one thing. You christened the new house? No, <laughs> dude. I was asleep at eight o'clock last night. I couldn't. I could not go any longer. We were done. You know, U hauls back. Everybody leaves, and then it was just I'm I'm out. Um, so. I probably shouldn't have done this from an energy standpoint and uh, trying to get off the sick fully standpoint. That's right. You sound better. But it was it was it was a long day. It's super stressful. Your arms get all tore up, you know, from bumping into box and damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, our buddy Brian Damaris, who used to do stand up comedy, off and on for twenty years, I believe, is the drop says. Um. He hit me up and told me that Andrew Schultz, who he opened for in front of like 50 people some five, seven, eight years ago. I don't know. But they've known each other a while. Andrew Schultz co-hosts a podcast with Akash, our, uh, our buddy. And Andrew's a big deal. And he was in town. He's touring. And uh, Brian was like, hey, do you want to do this? And when he said it to me in the middle of the day, I'm like, there's just no way way I'm going to have the juice for that because it was going to be the late show. He asked you that day? I can't remember if he asked me Friday or Saturday. Okay. I, it I wasn't, assumed you had this on the books for months. No. Because... No, this he either asked me Friday night or Saturday morning. This was spur of the moment. Because I 
was with you Saturday, and I couldn't believe you were going. Like you were yeah. already, yeah, I was hammered fake. beats. You had been yeah. sick all week. You have another day to do tomorrow, which I just was going to be imagine, even longer day. I couldn't imagine your wife's reaction to, "Hey, I'm just going to leave and go do a comedy show. We'll see you. Good luck with all these boxes." Well, so that was the thing. Is one, she knows that I don't really do too much with friends anymore. So, if it had been the early show, she might have pushed back. But I didn't leave till like nine fifteen, like nine o'clock. You know, the kids are down. She had given up on packing for the day. All right, like she was done, and. She did what I probably should have done, which was just chill out. But I had never seen Andrew. I love going to comedy shows, um, and I wanted to. I wanted to see him, so I just I met Brian at Fair Park. Went to Fair Park Music Hall and uh, watched Andrew. Got there like right when he was starting. Brian was like at a little beer bar next door, so I just met him. He came outside. We walked over. Didn't really have any interest in seeing the opener. Okay, you didn't see the opener. I, I mean. I wonder who. I know was. that's rude, but like I didn't, you know, I wanted to leave as late as I could. Yeah. And Andrew was awesome. Um, like 40 minutes of his set, which was probably tiresome for some people, maybe it was more like 30 minutes of his set, was about going through IUI and IVF with his wife. Okay. So, which I obviously did twice. Yeah. And, you know, I think there are a lot more people who deal with it than you think or realize. And I, had that confirmed for me somewhat based on the reaction to the jokes and it's really kind of weird when he's when someone's like um hey who's been through ivf you're like Woo! yeah <laughs> like how do you register that you experienced it in any other way than like clapping yeah i did because you know there'd be like if somebody's like hey is anybody from oklahoma in here right kind of clap but it's like hey um did you spend forty thousand dollars on the off chance that you could have a child and go through a very horrible traumatic experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he it was like it was so weird, dude, because I think I've memory hold a lot of that experience. It's like we did it and it was done. But then it was like reliving it completely. But I suppose too, you know, I guess I can't speak to it because I didn't see his thing, but like John Mullaney does forty minutes on being a drug addict? Being in rehab. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, this is awesome, but I've never been in rehab. Yeah. So, and I think people in general, he, obviously he made it funny, but just like thinking about doing the shots every day, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> you gave your wife shots. Every day. Yeah. For several months. I remember that. And it was like so many of them that she would bruise and I had to, you know, did you start doing it like under the toenail and stuff, like the heroin addict? <laughs> we didn't have to go quite that far, but it is like in your butt, uh -huh. which yeah. at some point, if you're putting a needle in someone's glute every day, you have to find new places on the butt, uh -huh. move around. Um, but yeah, then... And then um, that leads to sexy time, right? Yeah, right there. Right there. Needle's still in. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like I said, Brian knows him pretty well, so we did like the little green room thing afterward okay A akash's brother was there who we've met a couple oh, okay. times and uh nice i didn't know what it was going to be like because it was probably like has he heard of us since akash is yeah his co-host and because akash was heavily featured in our legal drama oh okay he was aware of that all right great yeah and i always feel weird in those situations because like i said there's 15 20 people back there you know there's um, it wasn't like a full food spread, but there's like beers and you waters, whatever. And um, I always feel like you're kind of just standing there like when the talent comes in, like doing a pick me, come over and shake my hand. And I don't want to be like an ass whip, you know? Yeah. Because he probably knows all these people in here. But I'll be damned, dude, if like he didn't make a beeline for Brian and probably stood there and talked to us for 15, 20 minutes and... Not anybody else, really. And other people there are like, who are these yeah. idiots? And eventually he's like, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna say what's up to some of my other friends who were here, and I left, and Brian stayed. But he was awesome. He was very aware of our whole deal. He was asking me about the show and the lawsuit, and, you know, because their show is massive. Yeah. Like, they're a massive, massive podcast. And I was like, we're kind of a, maybe we eventually are regional, but we're not, like, a national show like they are. Um, we're mid, we're mid, but he was super, super nice. And it's always shocking to me. Um, 
I guess I've heard people say this about you to an extent. Definitely this is the case with Akash because Akash's act is pretty over the top. Like he's using the word bitch to refer to his wife or women a lot. Uh -huh. But then like afterward, he was the sweetest husband I've ever been around in my life. Almost to a point where I was like, is this fake? Right, right, no. Like, are you just doing this because we're here? Yeah. It's not. And Andrew ha is a very, it's a very offensive show. Like, he's hardcore. Uh -huh. And then you meet him afterward, and he's just like, he was the sweetest, nicest, most engaging dude, like, that you could possibly imagine. Yeah, he's doing a show. I know, it's Trying just weird. Trying to make weird. people laugh. That's funny. It's just weird, because I don't know if you've seen his, like, current haircut, but if you think oh, I yeah. have, like, a slight alt-right thing going on here... No, his that's his a wild looks shaved like, on the he side. He looks like if Hitler was a hipster in 2024. <laughs> and, you know, he said at one point, he's like, um, I don't know how he, he started talking about religion. He's like, any, any Jews in the house? And again, people are like, woo! <laughs> okay. Yeah, and he's like, you really want to cheer and identify yourself to a guy with this haircut right now? <laughs> so he leans into it. But uh, yeah, it was a great time. And then I definitely, without even really like drinking, uh, woke up Saturday, mo Sunday morning and was like, I don't know if I should have done that. <laughs> like I wasn't hung over. I was just like, I slept for four hours. And it was weird because when I was with you on Saturday, I thought you were, this guy has no, nothing left in him. Yeah. And then I talked to you on Sunday and you sounded great. Sounded like $100. Yeah, I rode the wave until... About five, six o'clock last today, night, and they you just fine too. Like, hit right? a freaking wall. Well, you know, the, the deal today is, Dan, it's the, it's the eclipse. It's the eclipse. <laughs> You're juiced on the eclipse. It's buoying me. So what we're going to do in about, I don't know, maybe less than half hour. It's it's pretty easy Yeah, there's our chart. new logo. You know, there's a... We're going to go outside. <coughs> so we are at our studio. We've hinted that it is in downtown Dallas. We can tell you that. And we will wear, I had a, someone sent me uh, eclipse glasses. And so we have our eclipse glasses. I might go full Trump. This is approved by a NASA partner, it says. This blocks 100% of the harm, UV, IR, and visible light. Doesn't say harmful. NASA's not really into English. Yeah. They're into space. Yes. So we will uh, we'll go out and watch the eclipse. We're going to live stream it. Yeah. And it, w the problem is it's like totally cloudy, right? It didn't look good on the way in. I wonder what that's going to do. I've never seen a... See, this is what Blake is going to miss. The experience we get to see, what does an eclipse look like if there's clouds? Because <laughs> certainly it won't be as light out. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, that's not a great sell, but I'll, I'll roll with you. <laughs> we're going to have video and I think we might even play then we'll in post we'll uh, video man will put that video of us going to watch the eclipse in as our break in the show and then we'll do a little eclipse post game show I have a video that I need you to watch uh, that I gave to video man um, it do, this is not doesn't play great for the audio because it's uh, mostly just text but I think I want you to describe it okay. um it was posted this morning um, on Truth Social. How do you like a little music behind us, by the way? I like it quite a bit. I thought I'd bring a little good. of that up. Okay. Yeah, I approve. All right, that's all I want. Um, this was posted on Truth Social by, you guessed it, Donald Trump, who I believe is the only person who does post on Truth Social. I never see any posts that go viral or get mentioned on the news ever Yeah. other than by Donald Trump because, of course, he owns it and... Do you have an account? I don't, but you don't need one. You need one to post, but just to look at it, kind of like with Twitter, you don't need it. All right. So I saw this video, and I wanted to play it, and you uh, kind of describe what you see. Okay. The most important moment, this is the text. Yeah, text. There's a sun. Yeah, text over the sun. In human history... All right. And now a group Selling of people better than you are. Staring up, people staring up at the uh, sky with their yeah, no, eclipse it says, glasses. It says, is taking place in 2024. Looks like the moon is moving in. Yeah, something is uh, moving over the sun. 
covering the sun. People, again, huge crowds of people looking up in anticipation. They're cheering. They're excited. They're smiling. There it is, covering half of the sun now. Three quarters Wait, of the sun, and now you is see that it's the moon? a... It looks to be a silhouette. People are screaming. It is a silhouette of the big man himself, Donald Trump, <coughs> covering the sun. And then it says, we will save America. <laughs> so and there's dancing. <coughs> to be clear. And uh, a black lady, a Native American, we're all together. a uh, white guy, yeah. a uh, Hispanic gentleman. Yeah. And then fade back to the Donalds as the moon silhouette over. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Now, I would, to be clear, um, the most important event in human history was not the eclipse. It's no, the it election. Says Trump 2024. It's, it's, it's his campaign uh, this year. So he somehow cucked the moon. I love that. <laughs> like That's the most amazing promotional move I think I've ever seen. He made the eclipse about him. That is so great. Incredible. Um, do you want to keep jerking around and do a little viewer mail and stuff? And then sure. we'll do sport. We have a lot of sports. <laughs> kind of a lot of sports. Anyway, we also have the Eclipse. So, Leah, let's do this. Hey, everybody. I have viewer it's mail for you. It's time to answer some of today's viewer mail. What I have is actually the first piece of viewer mail is not email. It's real mail. This was sent to us at the den, and I've been holding on to it for a week, waiting until we had another video program. And this is 9-11 related. Remember Friday, we heard from the guy who actually owns the Mesa Mexican cuisine. Yes. Very near your to-be-renovated house where the Grapevine 9-11 Memorial sits in front of that. Yes. And so this is kind of related from Spencer, who says, you'll soon receive a package containing, well, here it is. It is the Dumb Zone's own, very own (laughs) 9-11 Memorial. (laughs) Okay. Spencer. He uh, he just says, you know. Never forget. I thought you'd like to join the list of landmarks displaying and honoring our national creed. Never forget. Yeah, and there's a little. I want that on my side. You want it on your side? Here. Yeah. Take it right now. Okay. Ugh. See if you notice the Easter egg that Video Man set up for you on your shelf. Oh, my girl. <laughs> Who do we got? Paige. Is that the women's basketball player that you want to crush like a walnut? No, I want her to crush me. Oh, like you a want walnut. her to crush your head? Yes. She's like 6'4. Okay. We could dominate front courts forever if we simply made it. Quite a few birthdays. Do you think I need to speed through this stuff? I think I number, want you to do what you want to do. Number one, we have Nima Shabazi. You got to get that one. The great Nima. It's his Willie Parker birthday. <laughs> I can't I can't pull that one. Claim to fame is roofying bad radio, forcing them to go to Niagara Falls. Uh, leaders are double stuff Oreos and Jake's text about a radio host basketball opinions. Move on. That is from uh Navid, but uh well we know him as well, but Nima. Happy birthday to the great Nima. Somehow I feel like that guy has 10 birthdays a year. We have Chris, commissioner of the Free Play Arcade. Oh, nice. I Killer know. Queen League. So hes I don't know if he's associated with the Free Play Arcade. Oh. That reminds me. I know a guy named Chris from Free Play. That guy called me when we first got into our thing and said, hey, make sure you call me when you're up and flying. Okay. Well, we're at least up. Right. Jury's Free out on, play yeah. Arcade. Don't forget that video, yeah. man. I'm We're more of a Boeing <laughs> 737 flying right now where pieces are falling <laughs> falling <laughs> off the plane. <laughs> but it's up there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he has run into Jake before, maybe at the Alamo Draft House. He probably did not smoke a cigarette with him. 
from Nate. Uh, my name is Eric, day 30-something, day one hang zoner. Uh, you're my leader, Blake, more Blake, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was my birthday on the 3rd. Oh, he's offering to smoke us out at our 420 bit. <laughs> I don't think. We're going to be working, sir. <coughs> I don't think there'll be any smoking out. But happy birthday. Uh, well, let's I appreciate see. the offer. Dumb Zone is my 47th birthday. I'm thrilled to share it with space. Uh, let's see. Um, I have no connection to Texas, but somehow find myself listening to Texas radio 15 years ago via internet. Uh, let's see. I'd like, okay, anyway, what's his name? Gordon in Seattle. Gordon? Gordon in Seattle. Uh, let's see. What do you say about this one? Andrew wanted us to promote that he got engaged. Uh, I don't know, man. Those things fall through quite a bit. Like, I, I think married. Oh, this might not work out? Yeah, I would say even married, we'd be like, I don't know questionable but engaged okay he never really gave her not her name well then it's probably already off to a tough start uh jared cowell is a day seven subscriber in fayetteville and i turned 46 today more jake <laughs> no puppet and we have happy eclipse day to those who observed it is uh my tall friend and member of the exclusive Has Smoked with Jake club member, day one, DF number 50, Tanner Hutt's Seth Curry birthday. That is a good good man right there. I went uh, to Arrowhead with him, with them, to go see Patrick Mahomes, and then he didn't play. <laughs> Got to see Matt Castle, though. Or no, Matt Moore. Former cowboy. His leaders are the salt on Mr. Jones's McMuffin, <laughs> Jake getting ball sacked, which happens often. It does. Uh, Matt Moore and the ghost of Yogi Ferrell. He's <laughs> a fun player. That's from Landry Atkinson, who sent a picture of Alex Bannister. As he will do. Yeah, all right. Happy birthday, Tan Man. Do you think someday we want a yaw wall? In our studio? I think it'd be funnier if it was that, but it was just dudes with their shirts off. Like okay. listeners to our show. Yeah, because because we just think that'd be funny. Yeah, just whatever. I don't I don't yeah. I, I think it'd be funny to do that. I mean I yeah, don't it, I don't want pictures. Especially of hot if you're guys like ripped. There. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> if you had oil on, that would be like the funniest thing. Oh my I'd god, ever I'd heard in my life. I'd I'd be laughing if you like <laughs> shaved your chest and stuff. <laughs> and you were real tan. Yeah, and you're wearing a speedo, that would be yeah. Pulsating. <laughs> um, oh, and did we talk about the cult thing on the show? Um, I don't know, because we've talked about it a lot, but I can't remember if it was ever actually on the show. It says, hello, leader. My sister and her brand new au pair from South Africa are recently at a bank. They sat down with one of the bankers to set up a checking account for the au pair. Unprompted, the banker said, want to know something unusual about me? I grew up in a cult in Mexico. My dad had 13 wives and ordered the murder of both my uncles and quite a few other people. There's a documentary about us on Hulu. We have talked about this. Okay. The I fact could, that... I uh, could not remember, and I still have to go through the rest of the episodes. Yes, I have not we, finished we, we that will. either. Um, but yes, we were talking about... <coughs> my banker was in a cult. I wonder, and, and I suppose it's to it is odd one. that you just offer that. Yeah. yeah, she she said she thought it was weird her second day in the U.S. that this is what she's learned about <laughs> the au pair. She thinks it's going to be great. Yeah, like man, people here are cool. Don't worry, it was Mexico. Yeah, it was Mexico. Worth but it. yes, I uh, I was interested on. Well, you know what? I don't want to say anything else. That's from uh, Mark in Plano, day one, She's number very 36. He says, P.S. Jake has vape voice. I might. So maybe that's what's going on. All right, let us move on before we get to Eclipse stuff. 
to this. Broadcasters used to just, like, intentionally smoke, though, right? Like, when I was sick the other day and it sounded so cool. I feel like you shouldn't be afraid, although I don't know the rules of the building we're in. I was going to say, you know, in the old days, they'd have an ashtray and a... Why don't we just not talk about it? A cigarette. No, but I, I just thought you should openly vape. Yeah. The, the, you the, don't do this. The noise is annoying. How do you vape? The noise is annoying, right? Because... Do you do it with your two fingers or a finger and a thumb? I'm more of just like a hold the... Oh, like in, you kind of try to hide it. Yeah, yeah. I guess. You know, it makes that noise. I, ha- I listen to a couple of podcasts where the guy will just openly vape into his mic, and it's, it's distracting. <laughs> Let's talk Mavs. Okay. And then after the break, <coughs> I'll play you some uh, women's basketball audio, which uh, amused me over the weekend. But I feel like we're all pretty stoked on the Mavs right now. Yeah, I mean. Check out those NBA standings. They're a game back from the four, right? That was an incredible game Sunday. Unbelievable. That they had no business No winning. business. I guess if you're going to get down 22, make it in the first half. Yeah. And um, I guess. Today's NBA, Jake. It is today's NBA, but they also have an absolute fourth quarter assassin. So. That's insane. I don't really ever feel that they're totally out of a game. And Houston's not bad. I mean, they had lost four in a row going in, but they were above 500 a week ago. They play tough. They've, they've been now eliminated. been eliminated. Yeah. yeah, but they're not bad like they've been in years past. They're not Charlotte, who they see next. Um, they play tough, and they could not freaking miss early yesterday. And then here comes Kyrie. It's Dude, it's Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because there's games like last night where you know that he's one of the most skilled passers in the NBA. But on a game like yesterday, he's like, look, I'm getting buckets. He had two assists. And he just kind of played, it's time for Kyrie to win this game mode in the back half of the third and the fourth quarter. And then I think Luca loves that. Oh, he's got to, man. I wrote it just takes load off Luca. That's one thing I wrote. Um, in the last Mavs thing I wrote was just that he seems, Luca seems as fresh as he ever has at this point of the year. I feel like there were times, not even just last year, where things all went to hell, but every year, basically, he just looks like he's limping to the finish line. And so then people are like, oh, he's out of shape. I'm like, look, nobody's doing what this guy's doing. And the question was, is that bad? Is it sustainable? And then maybe related to that was, would he ever actually give up the ball a little bit if he believed in someone else? And lo and behold, it looks like he does, has, and it's working out very well. Yeah, They really? could win the championship with this team. Well, they're definitely out of the play-in, right? Or do they still have a couple games? They have a very a pretty easy schedule going in. But I mean, they're not, they're out of, they're not going to be seven or eight. No, I don't think so. That was always the worry throughout this season. You feel like you're going to get two of the four. You'll be favored at least in two of the four at Charlotte and home to Miami. And then you'll have Miami, or excuse me, home to Detroit. And then you'll have Miami and Oklahoma City. So I'd love to see them. um, I'd love to see them get to 50. And that now seems very doable if they just win those two games against teams that have punted on their season. What do you make of the fact that Although the odds are much better, and it would really help me financially, that Luca still did you see uh, who is it? Bon Temps, I think Tim Bon Temps will have some kind of a, a a poll with media members just to see where the wind is blowing on the MVP, and it's like Jokic by a landslide. Luca got like one first place vote. Yeah, which seems insane. It's weird to me too. I know he moved up in most trackers to two. We talked about that, like he passed Shea. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I would have thought there'd be Jokic fatigue. Right. That's. Uh, I think. Don't you get that? Luca's time. They, He's had the they best. did that for Barkley uh, Jordan, with Jordan. Yeah. And yeah. Luca's having Steve the best Steve Nash year of got his it career. instead of LeBron or Kobe, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It feels like it should be much, much closer to me. This is the best season he's ever had. He's so good. They're good. Imagine the team without him. 
all that kind of stuff. You know, the other thing too is, um, I think I saw Nick from Locked On Mavs tweet this out last week. Um, I don't remember the exact parameters of it, but people forget how hurt this team has been all year. Like they've been really lucky since the trade deadline that most everybody outside of Lively has been healthy. But before that, man, they were like losing the most man games of any team in the West. Had they just had average health, I think they'd probably be at the three seed right now. Is it just because they might end up at six that Luka has lower odds? Because that seems silly to me. Watch the games. Um, yeah, and seeding, that seems ridiculous too. Did, like a, didn't a, stop everybody from voting for Russ. Russ, well, and he had an, an anomaly season though, right? Yeah, but Lucas is not that far off. Yeah, I know, but it was the it was the first time it happened since Oscar Robertson when he got he was the first to average a triple double since Oscar Robertson, and that just stood out to everybody until later. You know, historians would look back pretty quickly after that and be like, "Yeah, he was not the best player in the league that year." No, he wasn't close. Yeah, and Lucas at nine point two rebounds and nine point eight assists, while also scoring thirty four a game. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know he's not the greatest defender, but neither is Jokic. Jokic is fine, but it's because he's huge. He's not a stopper. So do you have an opinion on where you want? <coughs> would you rather be sixth or fifth? Because it looks like the way things are, the Clippers are going to stay at four. You could get to four, but you need the Clippers to lose some games. And you'd still probably end up playing the Clippers. And it looked like the Clippers were going to lose on Sunday. They had a huge lead against the Cavs. Or, excuse me, the Cavs had a huge lead on the Clippers, and somehow the Clippers came back. But if you get to four, it probably means that they're at five. So you, Yeah, it you just get means you have home, home court. Game, but yeah. Which could be important. I don't know. Man, I don't know. I mean, on one hand, I'm really tired of playing the Clippers really tired of it even though but would you like to exercise that demon that's part of it and oklahoma city is so freaking talented so that's who you'd face yeah if, if you, you got six yeah pro they're pretty, probably probably locked into that i guess i'm looking ahead too to who would you well right now the timberwolves are the number one seed dallas can beat the timberwolves in a series and the nuggets are the number two seed that one could obviously pose problems. So the two you really have a problem with are the Thunder and the Nuggets? Yes. Don't feel that bad about uh, Phoenix? No. I don't. Now, they could get hot at any time uh, in a series and just have the talent, but they have no depth. Dallas does now. Dallas has got depth. They've got length. They're tough. They're getting in fights. It's a way. I mean, it's just way different. It's a completely different vibe of any Mavs team. I think, it, certainly in the Luka era, like they can win without having to hit all their threes. They can defend when they have to late in games. They're doing most of this right now without Lively, and if he's healthy in a playoff series, you got a nineteen-year-old springy backup center to go out there and block shots. They haven't had anything like that in forever, maybe ever. Where are you at on Jason Kidd these days? I don't know. I think about that a lot when I'm trying to like trying to write something Mavs related. I don't even know what to say anymore. I do know that I I know we need to give Nico a lot of credit. Mm hmm The Kyrie thing has worked out. Let's talk about that real quick. The Kyrie thing? I think we've compared I compared him to the Beltre experience a couple weeks ago. Because when the Rangers acquired Adrian Beltre, baseball people that I trusted, and it didn't, doesn't mean they were wrong, were like, you better watch out with this guy because he does not play well in the locker room. Uh, and he was great. And obviously Kyrie's stuff is more than just the locker room. But as I've said before, I don't really know that NBA players care that much about his political or social opinions. They might share a lot of them and just don't publicly share them. But it is very clear when you watch them get a big win last night, like last night, that he is like the vocal leader of the team that everyone looks to. Yeah, he's, he's like the, the locker room guy. He's the veteran 
yeah. presence that Luka isn't. Right. Like Kyrie has won a championship. Yeah, and he's super, super down the middle. And not just won a championship. It was a big part of was it. Was the, yeah, one of the main reasons, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you can have Luka at this stage of his career be the guy you're looking to for calming uh, influence. Oh, my gosh. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. You and want. Kyrie's just the opposite end of the spectrum. And it's, it's been really fascinating to watch that part of it. Because I don't think Kid is that guy, really. I don't, I don't know. They're winning games, so I don't want to be too critical. But I still don't know that he's going to be the best coach on the floor in most playoff series. Yeah, you wonder when it does come down to really close teams. And and adjustments. Now the adjustments, the X's and O's really matter. Is he the guy to do that? Just even the way he would complain about his roster, like let's see, even last year. When some would say, well, maybe you need to adjust your style of play to the ro- to the players you do have, like Carlisle did. Carlisle yeah. turned them into what? A three-point gunning. At one point, Carlisle, who loves defense, just like Jason Kidd, Carlisle loves defense. But at one point, didn't he kind of say, all right, we suck. We can't do it. We're just going to outscore everyone. And then they led the league and... Scoring and efficiency and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he would play three point guards sometimes, and he didn't like that. <laughs> no, he was you know, that wasn't in Berea just getting ragdolled out there, and he's like, "I have to play him because he can shoot." Yeah, and then that worked. By the way, you know who leads the NBA in offensive rating in points per game? Points per game. Well, Luca leaves in points. Team. Right? What team? Yeah. No, Indiana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are they doing much the same? It's pretty similar. I mean, they've got you know some great talent there as well, but yeah, he just... If you needed any proof that he could just kind of show up somewhere and immediately get league-leading offense out of them, uh, he can. Yeah. Uh, back to Kyrie just for a second before we take an eclipse break. We did always say if he's available, it's going to be great. Like, But he's got a history of not being healthy or just not being on the court for a certain... Whatever reason. Could be his sister's birthday. Yeah. Um, and But I believe I heard this. Did I hear Mark Stein say it? I'm trying to remember. But that Kyrie currently has the most consecutive games played he's had in like eight years. Like he's been on the floor. And it's all working. Hell, they even won Friday night without Luka. Yeah. That's something you just don't see. No, never. Boy, yeah, I guess I didn't realize he has played like 28, 29 straight games. Yeah. So. And think of that, man. If he had not, you know, that's part of the deal with him, like you said. But even if he had played five, six, seven more games this year, which he easily could have done. Yeah, maybe there. Yeah, but win win four or five of them, and you're the three seed. Let's go watch the eclipse. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So we have eclipse glasses because today in Dallas, Texas, we are in the path of totality. The path of totality. And we're going to uh, watch the solar eclipse. Right now, it is 13130. So right now, obviously, it's still very bright. We are well lit. Yeah. But is it going to be totally dark? Will it be like night? I mean, I think that's the expectation. No, I mean, this hasn't happened. I can't remember. What were the numbers I gave earlier? It was like 1878. 1878, and the next time this will happen is going to be in the year 2300 and something in Dallas. And so you are truly experiencing a -a once-in-a-lifetime situation here. You know, the other thing is it's getting cold. (laughs) It actually is. So there's validity to the sun is warm. We're here to report that? We've just we've just done an experiment. Do you think anybody will full release right at the moment? Absolutely, Jake. Wouldn't <laughs> you say that'd be a cool thing? Sven, are you going to have sex during the total darkness? Here we are. Wow. Someone's honking at the moon. People are cheering. The lights are now on on the uh, buildings in Dallas. Do you think Reunion Tower's all lit up? <laughs> it has to be, right? 
Yeah. Do you think on the side of the Omni, like they did when the Astros won, it says, congrats, Moon? <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Maybe more than every 150 years. Dude, if I was a native and Columbus or Magellan or someone is telling me that yeah. I got to give them all my shit or else they're going <laughs> to extinguish the sun and I'm looking at this. <laughs> yeah, your, uh, your tribe is over. Starting to light up again. Temp starts to go back up. Yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah, that's how you do it, too. Like, you're Columbus, and you know exactly how long it lasts. And you're like, all right, I'm telling you, you got three minutes to agree to everything I tell you, and I can make that thing go away. If you don't, it stays there forever. Right. And you time it out perfectly, and then it goes. And then, then you have all their riches and spices. Yeah, were there skeptics? Like, nah. It does seem, though, that Dallas was silent. Yeah. For quite some time, and now, like, the city is getting back to... Okay, let's get back to stuff. <laughs> it is. There is something very funny about cheering like you're at a sporting event when the, when the moon does its thing. Moon! <laughs> moon! 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 moon, moon. <laughs> Man, Eclipse. is Blake like one of Eclipse. the four people that left the Metroplex during this? Like voluntarily. Some people, oh, I got to go out of town for work. I uh, had to have a funeral to go. I have something that has makes me leave town. He saw this months in advance and is like, let me schedule my vacation for right then. And it wasn't because he wanted to monetize his home. Just kind of doing a bant. <laughs> Very little payoff. What a jerk. All right. Well, thanks. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. And let me play drops. But I can't see. Bang calling over here, bro. Is that Apollo Creed? Just random. Optic. By hat. He was paying boys for sex. Okay, don't make me watch your video. She told me she was a fertile myrtle. You, boy, you do look blind. What? Why are you doing blind mouth? He was betting more than you to do. Does it just happen? <laughs> you, <laughs> somehow That's you crazy. Just, you look we are so more important blind. than a Jackie Robinson statue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of That's a, crazy. A aloof smile. Are those awards regular season awards? I saw them in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. Man, the Halo I'm sector. glad I took the glasses off. Hey, pull your phone out or go to your iMessage. What an experience we had. Before we get into that, somebody um, uh, posted... My mom texted me. Oh, we'll get to that. All right. We'll get to that for sure. A crazy Path of Totality video. I'm not going to play it on the screen. It'll take too long. I just want to send it to you real quick, okay? All right. All right. You haven't texted yet? Oh, there we go. How do I have the sound of that? Oh, you're sending it from your yeah. computer. Uh, check out this Eclipse video I got from the Path of Totality. Is it us? No? Oh, gosh. Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> That's an old thing, isn't it? I've seen that before. Somebody hangs their sack over the the sun. It's not the Eclipse. It's just a guy with a <laughs> just <neck. laughs> A testicle just emerges from the bottom third of the screen as the moon would. Yeah. <laughs> we will not be playing that one on the Why YouTube Why don't you video. guys grow up? <laughs> That's just terrible. Oh, man. Eclipse postgame show. Pretty sweet, dude. Ooh. I'm not going to lie. It's better than I thought it was. Yeah. I'm you glad hit, we were up there. I think as if you go to our YouTube page, well... You're possibly there already, but on our YouTube page, we'll have the, the live stream uh, replay up. And I think you'll see that I you had convinced me. You're right. This ain't going to be that big of a deal. And then I turned around and thought it was a really big deal. Look, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I can't believe that Blake left. Well, I can't believe Blake left. I can't believe we're never going to see that again. That's what's cool about it, to think of it like that. Yeah. 
Like a Cowboy Super Bowl. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, we were cheering for the moon. It was that part was <laughs> hilarious, and I some of the audio is probably in the break we just played. And like you said, you can see the whole thing, the live stream on YouTube. But it was there were some really funny parts. Like I thought it was cool, but when people started cheering for the moon, like it had just <laughs> hit an like a game tying three because we were pretty far away from any crowds. Yeah, but we heard it's kind of like when you're outside the stadium or something. You're like, yeah. oh, oh what something happened? Must have had, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's people on top of a roof near the building we are, and as soon as the moon achieved its its uh, full blockage, it was like, yeah, moon! Moon, 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 go, moon, go! Yeah, and then I was correct about the fact that, I mean, I don't know if it was just, if it was necessarily crime-related, but there were a ton of emergency um, vehicle sirens immediately. Yeah. Right up, right leading up to it and after I don't know if it was just mayhem in downtown or what, but... I just hope everyone's okay. Surely. That's really... The, the kids, more than anything. Safety is the key to all good times. And, you know, we used to talk about how when Trump would say something really dumb, uh, you and I would be in the back of the crowd like, what a moron, and have no <laughs> idea why it was dumb. Right, yeah. Oh, I know that. Yeah, sure. Um, I was thinking about my kid being at school. She's five. Because I kind of wanted to look right at it for at least a second or two. Oh my gosh, yeah. Just to see? Yeah. So you think they're able to keep five-year-old boys who are knocking the kids down and like... Well, you could look right at it. During. but During the But as it was total. kind of happening, there were times where I wanted to take the glasses off and just, just to see. And I kind of gave it a little glare. So you think like first graders aren't like, whatever, teach. Can't tell me where to wear. It feels like that would be a tough, Abs especially in very this tough day and age, right? Yeah. Don't you feel like there's never been an age more where you just don't do things people say to do? Sure. Yeah. Like they're not the wanting last to take five years or so. Yeah. Yeah. We've changed a lot in the last five years, and I don't think you're recognizing it. Well, that was cool. I'm glad we did it. People that was were, cool. People were stoked. It the, feels weird creepy. to continue the program, but yeah, we do have some time left. And I do have some audio for you. So let's just slide right back into uh, women's basketball. It's all the rage right now. If you would like. The Friday night game drew $14 million. Really? More than any other NBA Finals game last year. What do you think went into the decision to, hey, let's make the championship game Sunday afternoon instead of primetime? Like, to do it Sunday night? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. I would think that would have been a better idea. Should have put the eclipse there, to, you know? I know, man. Man, I'm so glad the clouds cleared. That was Because all morning it was looked terrible, and when, I knew... When we got up there, it looked terrible. Yeah, right, yeah. Within 10 minutes, it just was uh, destiny. Maybe I'll go to church this Sunday. <laughs> Couldn't even... <laughs> Couldn't even get that out? <laughs> Um. Okay, women's basketball. Here, I want to find the audio for you. So I got a couple things for you. Number one. This huh? is. This is. <laughs> huh? This is ridiculous that this is a thing. I'm going to play just a couple seconds, and then I want you to tell me if you know what's going to happen here. Okay. Okay. Dan Zakchewski, outkick coach. You just. Yeah, of course. I know exactly what's going to happen. Even if I hadn't already seen this story, if you had told me it's a women's basketball press conference and someone from OutKick has a question, given what all the rage in the culture war is now, I would have known immediately. That's what they do. Well, it must be because it's a story and there's a, uh, a player on the opposing team. No, actually that... it was not. It's just complete hypothetical to get her to wait into his well, I'm sure it's maybe not against the opposing team, but I'm sure college basketball is just overrun. No, that's, with, there's there's none that I'm aware of. So, with it's, guys that couldn't make the men's team, but then they just yeah they just claim they're a woman just so that they can have 70 rebounds a game. Uh, yes, okay, let's go ahead and and play the whole thing. This is Dawn Staley, the championship coach. 
South Carolina? Yes. Yeah. Not Iowa. No. That's what we know for sure. Dan Zakrzewski, Outkick Coach, you just talked about, you know, what a massive weekend this is, obviously, for women's basketball, women's sports in general. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate, discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if... I love that that's also framed as this is one of the major issues in women's sports. Yeah. It's not. No. It's not affecting very many people. If it ever affects one person like that, was it Max? Mac Beggs. Mac Beggs? The local wrestler. It was a huge national story. You know why? That's like the only... It was one person. Yeah. So if you think there's a ton of uh, college players, think of how many high school, you know, high school wrestling. Yeah. The, there's a handful. There's like a couple swimmers in college. Right. But it is not, it's not the story that everyone is being affected by the way that he frames it. Yeah. Biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um. Damn, you got deep on me, then. She's just been for 20 minutes answering questions about Iowa, Caitlin Clark, the fact that they hadn't lost a game all season. They have an uh, you know, incredible win streak, all this kind of stuff. You know, they're the sort of thing you would expect her to comment at on. a basketball <laughs> press conference. Yes. And now she gets this. And so that's why she's like, oh, OK, well, I, I I'm on the I mean, I'm on the the opinion of of. If you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate that, in that, That's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes, yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Yeah, she started out with a pretty generic non-opinion answer. Knew that she was probably going to get a follow-up, so just went ahead and did it. Yeah. And, yeah, she answered the question. And then he probably went and wrote an article about it. <clears throat> I don't even like talking about it so much because it is such a deep hypothetical and should it ever reach a certain level. But I feel like there is a logical conclusion to, uh, to this in the, in the middle of it all, don't you? Yeah, it's, like, just a, it's a really confusing The issue. logic party that I want to run on mm -hmm. does not care if you're a Democrat or Republican. It just wants you to break it down. But and as I, far as when kids transition... And hormone therapy, and you know they've even tried to put like thresholds where they'll test and see how much testosterone you actually have in your body, and if you're below that, you can play. Yes, yeah, tough a woman. But, but have you built up muscles already? Yeah, you're because you were a man until you're 18. And Just, they've also had women in the Olympics, biological women who were not taking any drugs or hormones, who tested basically as males. Right, and they couldn't Just compete that's because the way they're, it is. they're freak athletes that have a lot of testosterone and so there's just no easy i don't know that there's an easy answer yeah i just know that the main reason it gets brought up a lot is because it allows people to get really fired up about it and take it to the fox news or whatever and see that's the thing about me i'm pretty left-leaning but these are not really things i care about that much right because i it's mean not an actual issue my left-leaning that's stuff the way i think of it be more about you know, the economy or like things that the workplace. An, that and, is an actual issue that if you made changes yeah. or changed some people's opinion on things would have a legitimate effect on yeah. a great amount of people. I don't think you should die from being sick if you're homeless. Okay. <laughs> that's a crazy one. But I feel like that's the things that I'm more interested in. And this is just the red meat that they have to throw out there. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. I, although I will say this, I did enjoy, and I, I should have texted uh, our dear friend Bob about this, but I did enjoy 
a couple weeks ago when Caitlin Clark was really cooking, the people on Twitter who decided that was a time to be like, tell me why Caitlin Clark can't play in the NBA. Oh, dude. <laughs> and I don't think they were trolling or kidding. Like, they're, Really? Yeah, I mean, I think there are people who don't know anything about sports. Okay. And they consider themselves, you know, stri- or ardent feminists. And they're like, this woman's amazing. Why couldn't... Come on, dude. Yeah, no. She wouldn't score a point. She probably would not score a point. They're like, well, why can't she just shoot? I mean, she's never getting the shot off. Yeah. You want to take it into the lane a couple times? Again, how would she do in the McDonald's All-American game, high school boys? Not well. Yeah. And that's not, not well. bad. No. That's those why are, I want to They're bigger, keep, they're faster, they're stronger. That's why I want to keep women's sports in the place where it is. It's fine. It's a thing. It's, it's interesting. Some people like it. I don't. I'm not into it at all. I like to watch the better sports. I don't, I don't like men's college basketball either. <laughs> yeah, it's... I'm with you. You know, they're inferior products. Let's watch uh, the pros. Um, oh, but nothing wrong with a little amateur tab every now and then. Well, okay. So, <laughs> oh man, I got caught by the hub this weekend, bro. You forgot? I forgot. <laughs> Went there, and there's this big, long thing, yeah, and then I thought, you that. know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. And then I started into it, and then I thought, I just bailed. Yeah, that's a sad. I end up existence. bailing. Like I'm just gonna go. You get a, if you get primed for action time and then just give up yeah that's like more sad than the moment if you actually did it and you're just like looking at yourself i just bailed just that's, i couldn't figure out how to get sucks. my identity like just like look at like even at the store they're not uh you know when you're buying beer or something they don't they're not even going through that yeah charade anymore with me yeah that's you get to a certain age and it's it's a little sad but now my computer doesn't know how old i am either Tough world. Look at me. I, I know. Come on, computer. Um, you might have to uh, remove the tape up there on the camera that you've been rocking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, what is this called? <coughs> it's a little round black thing that, I don't know what it's called, but I, I bought a, a whole slew of them from Amazon. <laughs> Let's put it right there. Now you are not monitoring me. That's where the man monitors you. Yeah. The man cannot see me right now. Um, Lynette Woodard. Do you know who that is? Um, I saw this story. I wish I hadn't. But uh, yes, I, I'm aware. So in the late 70s slash early 80s, she was a great woman's college basketball player for Kansas. And in fact, she owns the scoring record that was broken this year by Caitlin Clark. And I guess Iowa had her out there, you know, when Caitlin broke the record and she said lots of nice things about uh, Caitlin Clark and uh, they honored her and, and, you know, gave her her flowers, all that kind of stuff. So now she was at some kind of a speaking engagement. This was not a huge event, but somebody recorded this on their phone. Cell phones are everywhere now, Jake. Yeah. Crazy. And here's what she had to say. I am the hidden figure, but no longer now. I'm the hidden figure. A little tough to hear. Uh, my record was hidden uh, from everyone for 43 years. 43 years. Uh, I don't think, uh, I'll just go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Uh, I don't think my record has been broken uh, because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. And, uh, so unless you come with a men's basketball and a two-point shot, hey, you know. Spicy, the crowd loves it. But just for you, so you can understand. So if you can help me uh, spread that word. Yeah, she's just telling this small gathering. So she's saying apparently they must have played with the men's ball. It was news to me when I saw this story. And, of course, you know they didn't have the three-point shot. Yeah, I mean, we're not that far for, removed from didn't they just play a half-court game um, like sometime in some the point, mid-20th century? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no three-point shot, which Caitlin Clark obviously. But also, would I not be able to argue, do you not think the competition is a bit stiffer these days? Sure. Do you think that possibly she was like the only girl in her whole hometown that even played basketball? Probably so. 
you know, I'm sure they were winning games 80 to four or what, you know, whatever the used to see crazy, you know, scores a lot more often, I think, than you do now. Sure. The discrepancy in talent was much, much higher. I just think it's funny that she's basically giving another version of what if I would have played in one of those sling it around offenses. She was the first female globetrotter, and she was in the first ever WNBA draft at the age of 38, drafted by the Cleveland Rockers. Where? Cleveland. Well, no. Like, I didn't know, like, was, was the talent so bad that they had to take a 38-year-old one at 1-1 one, one or something? Or I think it was a first rounder, <laughs> but no one really knows. No. Those records cannot be found. Um, and had she stayed in Cleveland... Man, she would have enjoyed the path of totality right about now. By the way, I checked the traffic. I think we're we're easy. We were very concerned. We were going to take the dart downtown and all <laughs> yeah. this stuff to just because we had heard there's road closures and uh, yeah, I think it was that was overblown. The experience itself was not overblown, but I you, think that was overblown. I don't know if like 35 and 45 are going to be. I don't know. Maybe those are really bad right now. Yeah. If people traveling, you know, those are big interstates, but yeah, it looks like normal. But yes, that's uh, that is a funny story. Okay, so <clears throat> I actually have an extended today in history with a lot of sports stuff in there. You don't know the follow up on that story? There's more? She kind of walked it back. No. On social media. Once once people actually found out What's her she name? Said it? Uh Lynette Woodard. Okay. I didn't I had see the, the follow this up this morning. Yeah, because um, she was again. She was telling it to a little gathering of people, thinking this won't get out. It was funny too in that uh, in that audio. It sounded like it sounded like watching the crowd in like on like Maury, like where somebody drops a bomb and all the women in the crowd are like, "Ooh." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to clarify, my remarks made it at award ceremony Saturday. No one, res- no one, respects Caitlin Clark's accomplishments more than I do. That's like the basketball or sports version of no one is less racist than me. What about her dad? I feel like he respects her. Accomplishments. This is why I accepted their invitation to participate in her senior day. My message was oh, gr- a lot graciously of, accepted. Yeah, a lot has changed on and off the court, which makes it difficult to compare statistical accomplishments from different eras. Each is a snapshot in time. A little more nuance than that one. Yeah, she got got dragged. Yep. Are you ready for some news? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much all. Here's Jay Eclipse with the dumb well, zone news. It is the thing. Yeah, there were expected to be four thousand people at Mesquite Park today, and the news was out there last night. People were camping out, tents. Camping out in the park. I wonder if people were and doing I think that in our area. Actually, from Saturday. You said Grapevine Main Street is pretty hopping. Yeah, but I think that was, you know, partying and these these are hard- hardcore people. If you're sleeping outside for the weekend, they had bounce houses. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> so you're doing it for the community of it. Yeah, you're not doing it because you have to be there. Because you could just go out in your yard and do it. Yeah, I think part of this, you know, the parks that people were trying to to pinpoint where to be away from tall buildings to make sure that you had a a really good view of it. Like I saw Clyde Warren was packed, but I was thinking that could be a problem because there's just a lot of skyscrapery type buildings around there. Okay. Yeah. But it's pretty much straight up in the air. Yeah. I just, around one thirty. I imagine there were some places where if you're at ground level, it would have been kind of tough to see. I thought you were going to say all those people on Clyde Warren would cause the tunnel to uh, cave in. Yeah. You're always worried about that? Collapse. No, like, but doesn't the highway go under Clyde Warren? It does. Yeah, there you go. Do they have a weight limit? That's a good question, actually. Is Clyde Warren named after a kid? I think so, right? Yeah. I don't think you want to go too much further on that one. Oh. Especially since Blake's not here to add something to the list. That could be a bear trap. I was going to say, let's book Clyde Warren, but maybe that's not something. Is remembering a kid? Do you think there's any scenario where it's named after a kid where it's not a bear trap? Um, 
I mean, rich guys like throwing their money around, but you're right. Come on. It's got to be my sick kid. Yeah. All right. Strike that off in the record. I mentioned this uh, during. That was all off the record. Okay. If anybody hears that. (laughs) That just gave me a flashback to when you and I had to get a crash course. Do you interview? it It was mostly me kind of instructing you. Not like I have it all down, but I'd be like, Dan, no, we stop right now. This is now all off the record. We were interviewed. We were being interviewed a lot. Being interviewed by yeah, somebody from the <coughs> somewhere observer. Maybe it was the Washington Post. Yeah, we're gonna have to go off the record here for a minute. Yeah, that's weird. It, it's very weird. But sometimes you would just kind of start talking. And I'm like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just a guy who talks, man. I just want to hang out, have fun. So as I mentioned, whenever we were uh, up on the the roof doing a little live stream during Eclipse. There were a lot of fake glasses being sold on Amazon. I saw a story this morning where uh, they put out like the ID number, I guess like the product number, so that you could check and see if you had one of the ones that was going to burn your eyes. It just goes to show, and we'll have more stories about this tomorrow, I'm, I'm sure. In the days and weeks to come. There, there's not a single event that doesn't get marred by grift. In some way, shape, or form. Like yeah, I, nine eleven. So, a hundred percent. Somebody gets cancer. Yeah, we're gonna take advantage of that. Yeah, there were pro- and not not even always negative type grifts. There were probably a ton of people around selling stupid T shirts. Someone in the last hour has purchased an "I Survived the Eclipse" twenty twenty four, and all I got was this T shirt. Don't we have a? E6 Sportswear. Oh, we have a Dumb Zone shirt. I think there's a Eclipse with the Dumb Zone logo yeah. getting slowly we covered gotta up. Get on, then, we got to get in on it, too. Yeah, so if you would like that. Do we have an E6 Sportswear graphic to put on our videos? That would be a good bit. Anytime we mention it to sell. Write that down, Blake. Everything Blake. that happens today is just into the ether. I know. Blake's not here to write it down. Do you think he'll like listen back to it? No chance. What are these guys say about me today? They are you, talk about me. Are you aware of Morgan Wallen, Dan? Why do I know that name? He is a uh, country, country music megastar. Okay, yeah. And he was in trouble. He didn't do the Applebee's thing, did he? He took him by the Applebee. We had that guy. Don't admit that. No, that was not him. Uh, Morgan Wallen was first making headlines for those of us who don't follow country music a couple years ago because. He was caught on a ring doorbell camera yelling the N-word. Mm. And I believe he was set to perform on SNL like in the next week or two after the video came out. Well, certainly that hurt, hurt your SNL career. Um, well, I don't can't tell if you're doing a joke or not. Does it hurt your country music career? Uh, it did not. And SNL there canceled it. And he was on like three months later. Oh, okay. Yeah. They pulled a Shane. Yeah, he got his training, his sensitivity training. Um, but he's just the wild card of a dude. This is his most famous song on... What's it called? Last Night. Last night we let the liquor talk. I can't stand this sort of country music, man. We said, we said it it just like new country. Let's see once we hook, get into This it. is uh, pop music, Dan. Yeah, bro country. Let's see, what's this? But he's massive, massive. Should I play this song forward or backwards? This is called uh, Cowgirls. Hooray <laughs> for me. Yeah, I like it. It's a theme for the day for you. Oh, that's right. That's the way you could both watch the eclipse together while having love. That one doesn't really feel like love, but that doesn't mean it's not great. (laughs) That one sucks. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) You know, I I, I don't really care. Oh, all right. You just care that he said the N-word? Well, he's back in the news. Uh, He was arrested. It's terrible. Okay, back in the news. He was arrested last night. That's a tough scene. That's going to flag this for being played on YouTube. Yeah, don't. 
Darn it. It was Saturday. No. It was it was last night. I was going to say, like, if you get arrested and the news story says Sunday, usually it means you got arrested at 2 a.m. Sunday yes. morning. He was arrested at 1230 this morning. Oh. A little Sunday night partying in Nashville down at Broadway. That's their entertainment district. He threw a chair from a rooftop bar down into the crowded street. Mm. It is a six-story restaurant. That could ease Like the chairs we're in right now, if you threw that from six floors up and it hit somebody, they could very easily die. For sure. Very unfortunate for him. How high do you have to be up if you drop a penny that it could go through your skull? Empire you State that? Building, for sure, right? Yeah. Was that ever... There's no way that's true. I guess I've heard it would be embedded into the cement, but I, I suppose that that makes it. I me assume that it would go into your skull. What is the penny drop myth? You've heard of like back in the old days when they didn't have anything to do, they would toss, they would throw a baseball off a high building or a and see if you could catch it. Yeah, or out of a plane. Like they, they actually had, or like, um, there was a couple. Didn't you and Bob, like, broadcast from one of those one time or something? No, I did it uh, off the Stonely. Okay, it was a basketball in Dallas. Tried to f- catch a basketball, and my big concern was that it would go through my hands, hit the concrete, and hit my chin. I mean, it did go through my hands, but it didn't create a headshot. No, somehow, I mean, I didn't catch it. <laughs> Who could believe that? So he throws this chair. Six but Washington stories. senators would catch off the uh, Washington Monument, I believe. I have heard of Somebody that. Somebody threw a, a baseball. Yeah, Sorry. so uh, he's very lucky. And in general, it's a lucky situation that it didn't hit anybody. Because two uh, Nashville police officers were standing in front of the bar right when they saw the chair drop. And it landed about three feet from them. Damn. So, yes, because if you kill a cop, it's even worse, right? Considerably. Do you have an opinion on that? You look like you're no. contemplative. I agree with it. How does that work with the logic party? All lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as much as blue. That's what I say. Security footage later reviewed uh, that it showed Wallen lunging forward while throwing an object from the six-story rooftop. So it's not like he just... He can't blame another guy. No. His fall guy can't take it. And he was it. hammered. Yeah. And he's had a lot of problems with the the drink before. Is he's, that what caused the N-word yelling? I think he said that was, yeah. And there was also another time... Where it played a part. I saw recently, uh, he had like a sold-out show. And he sells out like amphitheaters so whatever they call the one in you know is it still dos Equis? starplex is what i call it place is full and as his set's supposed to start they put up a thing on the screen like a message from him saying that he's under the weather his voice doesn't feel good and he's got a he's got a bail that like, night like that minute with like twenty thousand people there so at the time, he's throwing something off a building. No, no, no. Okay. Wait. What are we saying I, When here? you said that night, I thought you meant like, when did he tell the crowd? He told them that night. But no, this was like a few months ago. Oh. But yeah, it's not like he told them a couple days beforehand and said, hey, you'll get your money back. His set was about to start. Oh, okay. So you're already seated. Yeah. Full on. And then I think he checked himself into something. Oh, man. Rehab or exhaustion or something but yeah he's he's you're heading to exhaustion rehab yeah i do wish that there was i i i said this a couple weeks ago but i I really do think i could benefit from just a few days of doing absolutely nothing it just turns out that's not great when you're trying to a build business and b have family yeah it never ends then um it is kind of funny because I knew you'd love this element. When when he did get caught with the slur, country radio said, well, stop playing your music for a little bit. So kind of similar to what happened with SNL. But the people wanted it? Yeah. The people demanded it? I remember hearing um, 
at the time, whenever we were still in the radio game, that it was either DJs or PDs, oftentimes one and the same at a music station, they were getting hammered on the phones. That pe- people were just really upset that they had caved to their woke culture. bosses. Yeah. Do you remember when the Michael Jackson documentary was on HBO or Netflix? Yeah, and people stopped playing Michael Jackson music. Couple, it seemed like there was a couple Mark Cuban radio operators out there yeah. who wanted to be the first ones. Yeah. And you'll always remember us because we led the charge. No, no longer going to play Michael Jackson. And that died down pretty quick. That one was insane, though. Because while that documentary was um, damning, it was damning. It wasn't shocking, right? We all kind of think that. The first thing in my like in my lifetime, I don't recall ever not thinking Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Yeah, like as soon as he entered my consciousness thirty years ago, the jokes on the playground were already like he likes little boys. Has Macaulay Culkin ever? commented like i think he's denied and defended man okay well and maybe he didn't diddle macaulay culkin yeah you but know there were other kids there that said that they are positive he did mm. you remember how he one of the kids he would make go to the corner of the room and like bend over yeah and he would just like stroke it i do believe uh, staring uh, at his little call that yeah boy b-hole yeah a little starfish <laughs> yeah no it was it was damning but the radio station PD, he's like, what? Right. Pull the Michael Jackson. Ridiculous. So the comp I made was Mark Cuban, when Kobe died, vowed that the Mavs are retiring his number. <laughs> They've never really hung a banner, right? Like, no. he never really followed through on that, did he? No. They might not give the number out. Yeah, and it was like, well, which one? But, like, if Luca wants it, he gets it. I have... If Kyrie wants it, he gets it. Ooh, I don't know about that. Interesting. I don't know about that. But I'd like, I'd love to see Luca try. I'd like to see Kyrie try, and then Kyrie could say, I want to honor, honor him. my hero. Yeah, which it was. Right. I, uh, I have long wanted Luca <laughs> to go into contract negotiations and say, I want to be here. But there's one thing you got to do. I'm wearing 24. Just to put Cuban in that spot. I think that would be great. Because obviously Cuban would sell it as like he's honoring him too. Right. But. What if Shohei wants Jackie Robinson? Have we talked about this? No, but that's a good one too. I don't think they do that. He's like, all right, I'll go play in Japan then. Man, that would be great. But everyone because MLB wants to be performative here. But everyone else still wears it on Jackie Robinson Day. It's just his regular number, also. Yeah, that'd be really funny. He wants to make it Shohei Day. Can I tell you um, what your local news is going to be full of tonight? Probably in like the C or D block, and tomorrow morning as well. Just like at the start of school, it will be your cool Eclipse kid picks. Not like the drawing program, but like, hey, here's here's the third grade class at such and such elementary with all their glasses on, and here's a mm. dog with eclipse glasses. There will absolutely be a dog. Yeah, cat, <laughs> like, yeah. That I promise you, every local news channel. Because I walked in here, thinking, hammer that tonight. Cute, cute eclipse stuff. I walked in here thinking, how could I put my eclipse glasses on, <laughs> on Baker? Baker, and it, it just won't won't really work. I don't think he doesn't need him. Nah, he can do anything. Nobody believed in him. So, yeah. He'll just make another one if he wants to see it again. I'll do a little uh, recon tonight and see what the, the local channels do because there will be nothing else on the news tonight. Oh, yeah. There was nothing else probably last night except for getting ready. Yeah. All right, there's your news. What a jerk. The Dumb Zone News. Da, like da, da, and da, da. subscribe. Bum, 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 bum. The Dumb Zone presents... Oh, yeah, some audio for you in this. in history. <laughs> well, I don't have to tell you, today is Monday, April 8th. Just because of the whole eclipse thing, we've been preparing for this for quite some time. The 99th day of the year. 
Ooh, tomorrow. That's a big one, Jake. Mm-hmm. Day 100. I know how you do it every year. I take off. Your day 100 party. So on this day in 1864, the United States Senate passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution that abolished slavery. That's great, isn't it? Certainly, it, uh, everybody was fully on board with that's a unanimous. Oh, wait. Uh, 38 to 6. Yeah. Six senators voted against it. And I think I have this right. We're still in the Civil War. Yeah. Right? 1864. Yeah, 61 to 65 is your. So we're not even dealing with the Confederate state senators. These are. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, let's look. Does that make, if you have two senators per 38 to 6, that doesn't make sense. That'd be 44. Yeah, yeah 22. Yeah. Okay. That does make sense. Um, yeah, six voted against it. By the way, so then I read a little bit about this morning trying to find those six. Then the uh, then they had to send it to the House of Representatives. Of course. It did not pass because they need two-thirds vote. It isn't just a majority. Right. And it took until the next January for it to actually pass, or maybe even the next April. Dude, this is crazy. So there's a government website you can go to, and it lists it basically transcripts of debates. You know, you've seen that before. Like C-SPAN has a website where you can see political speeches and the like. They have... The proceedings from January 6th, 7th, 9th, 10th, all the way down to the 31st in 1865 of the debates in the House of Representatives. Like, they've got reports on it. Like, what were the pros and cons then? Yeah. You can see what they're saying? Yeah. That's awesome. We go through those sometime. You know, it's really cool. What was it, the 13th Amendment? Really cool to me. And I haven't done this in a while, but maybe it'd be a good bit to revive. When I had a subscription to The Atlantic, oh, hmm. um, that publication has been around forever. Like, I do believe it was around in the late 1800s. And you could go, if you had a, a, an actual active subscription, you could go read uh, issues from then. And it was fascinating. Like, Find out what the the cons were, why but, we're not into this. But not even just stuff like slavery, you know? Like, what were they worried about that they would write about? You know, because now, like, the Atlantic is like, is AI going to kill us all? Yeah. But, you know, they had to. They were writing in 1904, you know, is the country going to hell because of fill in the blank? Or, you know, women. Should we let them vote and stuff? It's, it's crazy. Okay. I'd it's like to really, see that. It's really, really interesting, and it's it's not a summary it's word for word what they were writing yeah the woke atlantic all right so trying to get it passed through congress one of the one of the uh dissenters representative <laughs> chilton a white oh that just sounds <laughs> yeah i guess his name is white he uh it says here among other opponents so he's just stepped forward to be the uh the mouthpiece he warned the amendment could lead to full citizenship for blacks. And come that on. would be... Come on. Look, I know it's a couple steps down the road, but... Slippery slope, What if friends. we get there? And, like, everyone who was voting like for it was like, yeah, dude, that's what we're trying to do. Also, do you know Lincoln was pretty stoked, and maybe he did actually debate Frederick Douglass on this one, but he... I think he was trying to look for a good political answer to all of this where I could get both sides kind of happy here. He had a, uh, his original plan was to uh, round them up and send them back. That is true. Like he just, like, what if we just get rid of all black people? So, but by this time, of course, many generations of black people, they were American. But let's just send you to Africa, drop you off. Like that was a plan. That he thought, well, then 
people who are, you know, anti-slavery. Well, we don't have slaves anymore. And people who uh, don't like black people and stuff. Well. We're not going to have them anymore. You don't hear about that plan as much. No. But then that wouldn't have worked out in the end, right? Because they ended up kind of with a quasi-slavery anyway afterwards. Yep. Oh, well. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. On this day in 1974... Hank Aaron of the Braves hit his 715th career home run, breaking Babe Ruth's record. Who caught that ball? Don't know. You've interviewed him. I wonder if we talked to him about it. I just got reminded this morning looking at this. The man who caught the ball in the Braves' bullpen was Tom House. Oh. We have talked to him about that, actually. Did we? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Let me skip this one in 1987. I'll come back to it. 2013. Kidnapper slash rapist John Jamelski, who had imprisoned five women and girls as sex slaves inside a makeshift dungeon in DeWitt, New York, was arrested, pled guilty to five counts of first degree kidnapping, serving 18 years to life in a maximum security prison. Which doesn't seem like that long. No. Of a sentence, like if you could potentially get an 18 years if you're really cool. Um, But you've never heard about this guy because at this point we didn't have YouTube and we didn't go viral for being a neighbor, and that's why you've heard of the Cleveland guy. That's right, Charles Ramsey. Dead giveaway. And on this day in 2019, Chris Davis, at this point he is a Baltimore Oriole, former Ranger, set a major league record by going 49 at-bats without a hit. People were not on board with Chris Davis, if you remember the end of his career. No. He got now, a massive, massive contract, too. I go back to 1987, where we will uh, take a uh, trip into some audio. Because on this day in 1987, Al Campanis. Video Man didn't really remember Al Campanis until I uh, jogged his memory. Certainly, you certainly do, right? In- you're, indeed. You're Kempspin. Al Campanis was the vice president of player personnel for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And on this day, he resigned because he had appeared on ABC's Nightline a few days before to commemorate the great uh, the great occasion where Jackie Robinson broke the color, color barrier. And of course, you know, Campanis had been with the Dodgers. In fact, I think he even played with Jackie Robinson for a while. Um, The short story is that he said on ABC's Nightline that blacks might lack some of the necessities for becoming managers in baseball. And especially if you hear this, let's say, in this day and age, you might say, oh my gosh, um, woke. The guy said one thing, hmm. and you might have taken it out of context. You will see that very often right now, right? Uh, do, do you get what about the whole thing? Like, what was he saying? How did they lead him into it? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> it's even worse. So Ted Koppel, the moderator or the uh, the host. He has three guests, or two guests. He has Al Campanis to uh, celebrate Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. Uh, journalist Roger Kahn, he was a well-known baseball writer. I think he wrote a book, a bestseller. Might have been called Boys of Summer. Don't know, but I know he was pretty famous back in the day. And Al Campanis, who was with the Dodgers. So, Who was the third guest? Just two guests, sorry. So three people. It's Koppel, Al Campanis, and uh, author Roger Kahn. And Koppel asked Khan, how come, well, I guess he's asking about black managers, like are there current black managers type thing? Uh, cur- uh, cur- uh, currently? Uh, currently. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe so. But more significantly, are there any black general managers, managers or employees? Are there any black club owners? Jack, <laughs> uh, no. I, I asked Jack once, uh, would you like to manage after he was through playing? And, uh, Jackie Robinson. He said, as a matter of fact, although he had some tough associations with baseball, yes, he thought he would. 
thought he'd be a good one. And he said, once I got a call from uh, Vancouver, which was uh, in the deep minor leagues, and they asked if I'd be interested, and I told them I would be. They never called me back. So, although we all can rejoice in the progress that baseball has made in integration, I think if Jack were alive today, Jack would say, uh, how come there are no blacks running ball clubs? Mr. Campanis, it's a, it's a legitimate question. You're an old friend of Jackie Robinson's, but it's a, it's a tough question for you. You're still in baseball. Why, why is it that there are no black managers, no black general managers, no black owners? Well, Mr. Koppel, there have been some black managers, but I, I, I really can't answer that question directly. The only thing I can say is that... There might have been one previous to that. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe a couple. Uh, Cito Gaston was the Blue Jays manager, but that was the early 90s, wasn't it? That's when Joe Carter hit the game-winning home run for the Blue Jays. I'm trying to think. Frank Robinson was, of course, for the uh, Indians. Uh, he was the first black manager, and that wasn't until the mid-70s, and he was a player manager as well. There's a bit of asterisk, I think, when you include that. Yeah. Um, Very few, if any. Anyway, let's let Al Campanis keep talking. Directly, the only thing I can say is that you have to pay your dues when you become a manager. Uh, generally, you have to go to minor leagues. There's not very much pay involved, and some of the better known black players have been able to get into other fields and make a pretty good living in that way. Yeah, but you know in your heart of hearts, and we're going to take a break for a commercial, you know that that's a lot of baloney. I mean, there, there are a lot of black <laughs> players, there are a lot of great black baseball men. I feel like Ted Koppel is yeah, so. squarely on the right side of history on, on this one. There are a lot of great <laughs> black baseball men who would dearly love to be in managerial positions. And I guess what I'm really asking you is to, you know, peel it away a little bit. Just tell me, why do you think it is? Is there still that much prejudice in baseball today? No, I don't believe it's prejudice. I, I, I truly believe that they may not have some of the uh, necessities to uh, be, a, let's say, a field manager or p perhaps a, a general manager. You really believe that? Well. I don't say that they're all of them, but they they certainly are short. How many quarterbacks do you have? How many pitchers do you have that are black? How do you think this is going for Al Campanis? You think he's talking himself out of it yet? <laughs> Not quite. How many quarterbacks do you have? How many pitchers do you have that are black? See, it, it same yeah, but I mean, black. you know, I got to tell you, that sounds like the same kind of garbage we were hearing 40 years ago about players when they when they were saying, ah, not 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 really, not well, really cut out. Hey, you remember the days, you know, they hit a black football player in the knees, and you know, no, that really sounds like garbage if you if you forget no, that. So. That must have been something that I've never heard of. I wonder if Chappie knows about that or somebody older. Yeah, I, I mean, I, like, I don't know the specific to incidents. keep blacks out of. Even playing, yeah, it was well. They're not as tough. Yeah, um, they would be refereed differently. Yeah, if you, if you forget no, that, it's, it's not it's not garbage, Mr. Koppel, because uh, I played on a on a college team, and the center fielder was black, and then the backfield at NYU with a fullback who was black. Never knew the difference of whether he was black or white. We were teammates, so it, it just might be that. They, they, why are, are black uh, men or, or black people not good swimmers? Because they don't have the buoyancy. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, it may just be that they don't have access to all the country clubs and the pools, but I'll tell you what, let's take a break and we'll continue our discussion through in a moment. It. He thinks he's killing it. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it's just like how they can't swim. That was... They that don't was... have the buoyancy. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, that, that is... Obviously hilarious because it seemed as if he was going down the path of trying to say they don't have the intellect, right? Pitching, quarterback, he's trying to say, without saying it, that he believes that uh, even if given the opportunities of education, that uh, black men are less intelligent. And somewhere along that, he remembered that he thinks they can't swim all that well either. See? Also, yeah. <laughs> There's a variety of things so, black people can't do. He just had to, had to throw that one in there. The yeah, buoyancy thing that's really insane. Is that something that people were saying? Oh, I'm sure. That's why. And Ted Koppel's like, yeah, maybe because they. Yeah, maybe because uh, you know, you know why the is 60s, there no... Whenever they attempted uh, to go to pools, hotel owners would throw acid into the pool. 
or that's public. real? Oh yeah. My gosh. You never seen that picture? No. Yeah, there's a family of uh, a black family. Um, you could probably guess where it is. It's somewhere where you think it is, and they're in the pool. And the owner comes out and starts. To, he's got like buckets, paint buckets, and he's like dumping acid in the pool while the kids try to get out. It's a very horrific scene. Mm. That's I don't know fun. that I need to add that last part. I don't think you were thinking it was <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> a fun scene. Um, <laughs> that was very unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, did they start tripping and watch their hands go? And no, it wasn't LSD. Oh, you said no. acid. Oh, okay, I was no. like, how cool would that be, man? For free? Yeah. What if we had an eclipse now? <laughs> oh, there is now. <laughs> like, if you're on acid. Yeah. Um, all right, let's just kind of continue. Let's uh, continue after the break. Oh. I'm sure he uh, you know, got his senses together, and, and things will be a lot better after the break. Continuing our conversation now with Al Campanas and Roger Kahn. Mr. Kahn, how much courage did it take on Branch Wickey's part? It took, it took enormous courage, and he was threatened with uh, uh, ostracism by all of the other owners. Uh, the people that Red Smith used to call the fatheads who run baseball. Well, that phrase comes to mind because I think the real reason there are no black general managers is that there are a sufficient number of fatheads running baseball who think blacks aren't intelligent enough to be general managers. Al Campanis has been a friend for 40 years, and he doesn't only have my respect, the Dodger record tells us what kind of a baseball man he is, but, uh, but let's, let's say what it is, that there is a sense that the black can work in the field. He can work in the cotton field, and he can work on the ball field. But ask a, bra a black to use his brain, run a team, plan a team, Oh, my goodness, you're talking about real integration there. Yeah, Al Campanis, I want to, I, I, from everything I understand, you're a very decent man and, and, and a highly respected man in baseball. I confess to you before we began this program, baseball is not one of my areas of expertise. I'd like to give you another chance to dig yourself out, because <laughs> uh, I think you need it. <laughs> well, let me, let me just say this, Mr. Koppel. How many uh, executives do you have on a higher level or higher echelon in your business? Okay, so... During the break, he thought, I'm get, I got some other arguments that are better. For sure. Instead of... Maybe I didn't say what I ...reconsidering uh, the whole thing, yeah. ...have on a higher level or higher echelon in your business. Yeah. None, in, in, in TV, I mean... Uh, you're absolutely or, or, or right, anchor, but I'm, Or anchormen. How no. many uh, black anchormen do you have? Fortunately, just, fortunately just there are... About. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, there are a few black anchormen, but if you want me to tell you why there aren't any black executives, I'm not going to tell you it's because the blacks aren't intelligent enough. I'm going to tell you because it, it is that... Whites have been running the have been running the establishment of broadcasting just as they've been running the establishment of baseball for too long and seem to be reluctant to give up power. I mean that's what well, it finally boils down to, isn't it? Um he does not agree with that. Shocking. But then we go another uh, 10 minutes or so and then we're going to uh, wrap up. Well, I don't think this is the exact wrap it, but I just will fast forward to a just what continues uh, the Al Campanis career-ending interview. And what's the, th the thing is, too, of course, and this is why I think retiring Jackie Robinson's number across baseball is silly, because I think it's performative. And I think that all of this is performative, uh, because this is now this guy is actually coming out, and you're hearing, he ain't the only guy in baseball. Yeah. And he's with the Dodgers. And he played with Jackie Robinson. So he's, you know, the, the, the supposed, you know, most woke or most progressive uh, franchise that, that's going. Um, this is how he really feels. Um, so, yeah, just, just the whole, and I, I know the whole Jackie Robinson thing is supposed to represent uh, all black players, but, you know, they all, you know, Larry Doby with the Indians went through the exact same stuff that Jackie Robinson went through. But you're uh, not retiring his number, you know, because Jackie yeah. Robinson wore it publicly. But Larry Doby had teammates that wouldn't share stuff with him. Yeah. We've interviewed one of That's them. Also true. Where you know he got his uh, the N word. He had to stay in different hotels. He was uh, spikes coming high when he had to, you know, cover the bag or whatever. So uh, anyway, let's just uh, give you one more little piece. 
It, it, it seems so strange to me that we're able to see that kind of integration on the field and yet not be able to visualize it in the clubhouse, not be able to visualize it in the managerial suites. And, and in all fairness, Mr. Campanis, you're right, not be able to visualize it uh, in the executive suites at the networks and in some of the major newspapers. We've, we've all been much too slow. What, what reasons do you attribute that to, Mr. Campanis? Well, Mr. Koppel, I think uh, that Jackie Robinson probably did more for the acceptance of a black athlete than anyone uh, that I have, ever, have seen or known. But what you've got to realize that uh, when you had Still the argued. problems from the, the Civil I thought War. It. I thought he had it. Uh, okay, yeah, let's, yeah. That, let's back up in yeah. here. He just mentioned yeah. the Civil War. Okay. But what you've got to realize that uh, when you had the problems from the, the Civil War. Remember uh, the problems? <laughs> it becomes a thing that doesn't uh, happen overnight. I think Robinson Jackie did a tremendous job in, in uh, making the black athlete acceptable in the areas of which had never occurred before, namely playing professional Major League Baseball. And uh, if, if you look back and think about the fact that it took so long for an athlete, just to, you've got to realize it's going to take a little time also for executives and managers. They have to sort of get into this just about the rate that Jackie did, which took a long time. Uh, I, I guess I don't need to, to remind you, Mr. Campanis, when, when Jackie Robinson joined, you were a kid. Uh, no, no, ne no, no, neither, no. I neither, we played together. Neither, yeah, yeah, I mean, but you were a kid. You were a youngster, right? You were, what, in your 20s? How, how, I was how, in my mid-20s, mid right. Mid-20s, all right. Well, you're a man in your mid-60s right now. How many generations is this going to take, do you think? Well, uh, hmm. I don't have the crystal ball, Mr. Koppel, but I can only tell you that I think we're progressing very well in the game of baseball. We have not stopped the black man from becoming an executive. They also have to have the desire, hmm. just as uh, Jackie Robinson had the desire to become an outstanding ball player. Jeez. Yeah. So, like, if the Dodgers had offered Jackie Robinson a GM position or, you know, assistant GM or whatever, um, he certainly would have turned that down. Yeah, he didn't have the desire. He just, he just didn't really want it. He didn't have TWTW. That's insane. It's incredible because I you know, was sports conscious at this point, but I didn't really realize, again, I've just always realized it's the little the little clip. Okay, if he said they lack the necessities, but I do watch the news now and I see one thing gets turned around and it's like, that's not what they were saying. But that's what he was saying. He was, <laughs> he, it wasn't taken out of context um, and cancel culture and all that silly stuff. Uh, birthdays of famous people. C.D. Lamb is 25. About to get paid. I would think so, yeah. Uh, before Micah, right? Yeah, he's one year before Micah. Shaka Smart, 47. Marquette. Uh, Felix Hernandez, 38. Kind of fell off fast, huh? He did fall off fast. But man, there was a time. That was must see. Yeah, I looked at his stats today because I'm like, he's only 38? Yeah, that's surprising. Like, there are guys pitching that are 38, still pitching well. He fell off. Sometimes you have to, let's just be honest, question. <laughs> like? The age. Sometimes. Well, no, I mean, even uh, American-born are a certain age, like just still performing sure. well. But do you question? No. Or do we question Felix's age, are you saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he, maybe he's actually older. He okay, might be. Sorry, my bad. I don't think that's racist because it's actually been proven with a number of Latin ball players. Like, no one has a clue how old Albert Pujols is. I don't know if he knows. And they have said, you know, they want to tell scouts. Yes. If they tell a scout that you're uh, 19. They're like, ooh, that's a little late. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim Lampley is 75. Do you know the bullet point on Jim Lampley? I think we've done this before. I mean, I know who he is. <laughs> I learned this on the rant with Gordon Keith many years ago. Search Jim Lampley wife. 
Because I believe this is where the whole discussion of having a lobster claw comes Oh, in. she's Brie Walker? I believe so. Okay. What is a what is a lobster claw? Is it like you actually have like two fingers or I don't it it probably varies. Are you looking at it? No, I mean yeah, I just, it's a little Yeah. All right. Uh <laughs> she made it to T V. She made it to T V? Yeah. All right. Uh Tim the Tatman is thirty four. He's a very famous Twitch and YouTube streamer. Oh, wow. 34 seems old for that. Well, he got really famous. And now he's yeah, I guess that's true. Now he's living off his million. Old. Yeah. Uh, John Schneider is 64 from the Dukes of Hazard. He has some wild opinions. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Racist? Uh, it's just... Just uh, anything? Yeah. covid Richard Hatch is 63. I know, it's shocking. One of the actors from The Dukes of Hazard has some sometimes some life Im- imitates art opinions. Yeah, uh, Richard Hatch was the first winner of Survivor. Taxes. Back when I was, I mean, Bob made me watch it, but I was not anti. I wasn't Survivor. either. We I liked it, it a lot. It was. You might say I was stoked. I don't know what year that was, but I was old enough to like it was family viewing. Yeah, we were really into it. Yeah, I'd, for a little bit learn stuff kind of think could you do it oh you got to play political games mm-hmm. uh, that's when they were first kind of figuring that out too uh dean norris is 61 is that hank hank from breaking bad robin wright 58 i think dean norris accidentally tweeted a porn link once <laughs> damn blake isn't here to write that down that's another uh kemp spin <laughs> It's actually even funnier than that. Um, somehow, this was in May of 2018, and at Dean J Norris probably was trying to search uh, in, a, in a search bar for images, but instead just tweeted "sex gifts." What do you get when you search that? I don't know. Yeah, sex gifts. It has 12,000 retweets. It's still up? <coughs> well, it was respect. at the time of this article, yeah. I respect if that's still up. Uh, Robin Wright from Princess Bride. Uh, Patricia Arquette is 56. Is she the one from Escape from Danamora? Yeah, she's great. It's a great little show. Emma Caulfield is 51. I believe Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And keeping with that theme, musician Ezra Koenig is 40. Vampire Weekend. Let's cut that back a little bit. Born on the stay now dead, a lot of people, including Chris Kyle, <laughs> the uh, U.S. Navy SEAL sniper. I believe there was one... Th- <laughs> I think we can tell this story. I believe there was one... I want you to tell every story when you Once upon hesitate a time. and go. Yeah, and I don't. I think mostly I have. I don't know this first or even second hand, but there was some specul. People had said that Grego had said that he knew him pretty well and was at the funeral, and I believe even carrying the casket because he was off work the day of the funeral, which I believe was at Cowboy Stadium. And Cowboy I don't Stadium. believe that was true. Wow. But, you know, it was a time where there were a lot of tall tales being told. And Yarns yeah. being spun. Yeah, really. I mean, it's obviously a very tragic story. Um, but really kind of a weird move to take a guy that you know is really having a tough time. Depression. Has suicidal ideations. And you're form of therapy is to take him to a gun range yeah no it's that's um, almost a little victim blaming there they do it for sure and it does work you know yeah, chris kyle took lots of guys. the guy who would kill him yeah but it's a common thing in the military so you were just saying <laughs> it just doesn't seem ideal that it's a very serious story and all that kind of stuff and i was trying to think in my head real quickly 
come up with a way. How could we make the Chris Kyle story into a comedy? Or, <laughs> what do you got? Well, I don't think there is a way, but I was thinking. Gregor drops the casket. Okay, maybe, but it I'm, ain't gonna work, buddy. Yeah, I'm with her. But I was what flashed in my head was because you said it's a tragic and all that, and I said yeah, and I I nodded, agreed. But um, Hogan's Heroes was a comedy about a German concentration camp in World War II. It's true, or POW camp, I should say, yeah. concentration camp. I'm not sure you can find. Probably not. If 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 sixties TV couldn't find the funny in that, then it can't be found. Yeah, I would agree. But Hogan's Heroes was legit a comedy. I mean, the Germans, they're pretty bad. I can't imagine being a POW of the Germans was that great. Anyway. Died on this day, well, still dead. Let us know what you come up with. If you have any, <laughs> uh, sometimes I just throw it out there just to get the people thinking. Okay. Uh, Ryan White, Margaret Thatcher, James Helwig. Well, I only have this on there for Ty. Have you seen the uh, Norm Macdonald, Margaret Thatcher clip? I saw something floating around. What is it? Is um, it funny? Yeah, but the, uh, the audio doesn't totally sell it, but you can try. Uh-huh. Um, let's see if I have it here. It's from his podcast. Oh, here, I got it. Let me pause it here. We won't be able to do the video, but you'll have to set the scene a little bit. I have to set the scene? Well, it describe what you see afterward, because it doesn't all come through, I don't think, in the, in the audio. This is my promise okay. to the people of the video podcast network world. I will not eat a single morsel of food until Margaret Thatcher is dead and buried. She died three weeks ago. Oh, now he's just diving into a big a giant bucket, bucket of, of fried the, chicken. Yeah, right sitting back with there. Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> this is my. <laughs> the way he attacks the bucket is so funny, too. Like, there's no hang time in between. Uh, she died three weeks ago. <laughs> also died on this day. <coughs> I won't tell you what year. In fact, I want Video Man to yell out the year. Because I don't think he's familiar with this. He was 92. Pablo Picasso. What year would you say? Give me a window. You don't have to get the, the year. Give me a two or three decade window. Maybe even a hundred year window. I just remember when I first learned about this, I was surprised at when he lived. What do you got? Early 1900s. That's inter- that's a lot later than I thought he would have guessed. Yeah, because I would. I we was were thinking like 16, 1700s. Might have helped Michelangelo. Might maybe with yeah. a project or yeah, two. Could have been or, even further. Yeah. Um, who's the other one I I saw in in Amsterdam or or France? Well, whatever. Monet. Mm-hmm. Might have painted him with Monet. Actually, Pablo Picasso. He might have gone to see Paul McCartney and Wings. <laughs> this is how old, how long ago he went. He saw Nolan Ryan pitch. Yeah. He didn't only see The Godfather. He saw him win the Academy Award the next year. He died in 1973 on this day. And I just feel like you say Pablo Picasso. Definitely. And you think of Rembrandt. He saw the Dolphins go undefeated. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> Amazing. Uh, And that was Today in History. We survived the eclipse. That was cool. Yeah, I guess it was. Now what? I got to go unpack stuff. Adios, mofo.